Chapter 311, Top 8 The Venue of the World Martial Arts Tournament As the start of the tournament was fast approaching, well-known and powerful experts from all over the world arrived from thousands of miles away, making the whole venue unusually lively. Ha <laughs> ha, there are so many people, and they are all martial artists gathered from around the world, Gaku looked around from behind Master Rashi and said excitedly, his expression full of excitement. Senior Brother Gaku and Senior Brother Krillin, these people's keys seem to be very weak, have they also come to participate in the World Martial Arts Tournament? Chi-Chi had just learned to sense the existence of Ki. She spread out her consciousness, and found out that apart from her, Gaku and Krillin, there were basically no powerful keys in the venue. These contestants, if their battle power was calculated, it would at most only reach a dozen or so, and even the best among them has no more than fifty. Chi-Chi felt a little disappointed and mused, are formidable experts actually so rare in the whole world? Let's register first, then, we'll go to the venue of the preliminary rounds. Don't look around, and take care that you don't get lost. Master Rashi bent down and sternly warned the overly excited Gaku, Krillin, and Chi-Chi. Then he led the three of them to get registered. At this moment, Zayaya was strolling around with Xiling and Myers. Zayaya, I don't seem to see your preparatory disciple, he hasn't come yet. Xiling stretched her body and said with a smile. Zayaya shook his head and said, they have already arrived, but they must have gone to register. Sure enough, after a little while, Tian Xinyan and Tietzu walked out of the crowd and noticed Launch who was in blue-haired mode. They were slightly startled, but they also knew that she had a peculiar characteristic of switching personalities. Teacher, you are here, Tian Xinyan curbed the arrogance in his heart and said humbly. Don't call me teacher. Wait until you have become the champion of the tournament, then I will accept you as my disciple. Xiaoya waved his hand. Yes. Tian Xinyan responded earnestly. Then they met Master Rashi's group. At this time, Gaku and others had already changed to the special martial arts uniform of the Turtle School. After the registrations were completed, the preliminaries were scheduled to begin shortly after. Ah, Gaku, you didn't inform me when you arrived. I have been waiting for you for a long time. A cute girl with a ponytail squeezed out from the packed crowd. Oolong was also with her. Bulma, you arrived so early, Gaku said, slightly surprised. Bulma said angrily, didn't you agree to contact me? You made me wait in vain for so long. Hee <laughs> hee, I forgot, Gaku said, smiling sheepishly. At this time Krillin quietly asked Gaku, Gaku, who is this cute girl? You seem to be quite familiar with her. Oh, she is called Bulma a friend who had previously adventured with me. Then Gaku introduced Krillin and Chi-Chi to Bulma. Bulma looked at Chi-Chi with amazement. She couldn't help but feel astonished, she couldn't imagine how the brutish ox king would have such a cute and lovely daughter like Chi-Chi. Hello. Bulma stood next to Gaku and greeted everyone enthusiastically. Ha ha ha, Bulma, you have also come. You are really getting more and more beautiful, suddenly, Master Rashi hopped out of nowhere and said. Bulma looked at Master Rashi with an unpleasant expression and cursed, Old rogue, stay far away from me. Uh, oh, you are really unreasonable, little girl, Master Rashi pouted and withdrew to the side, feeling regretful. Gaku, Krillin, Chi Chi, it's time to test the results of your training. I heard from Zayaya that the duo from the Crane School would also participate in the martial arts tournament. Although I don't know what their aim is, the disciples of our Turtle School must not lose to the Crane School. Do you understand? Yet. Yeah. Krillin repeatedly nodded. Chi Chi affirmed, yes, Master Rashi. Are they also going to take part in the competition? Then I'll have to try harder. As Gaku heard that Tian Xinyan and Tietzu were also participating in the competition, his expression immediately turned serious. Previously, when he saw the fight between Tian Xinyan and blonde haired Launch, he felt very itchy watching them from the sidelines. However, there was an opportunity this time, so he really wanted to properly compete with Tian Xinyan. At this time, a loud gong rang out, and a staff member stepped up and addressed the crowd using a big loudspeaker, the contestants participating in the martial arts tournament, please go to the competition hall for the qualifying matches. Go, the qualifying matches are about to begin, and you must first qualify for the top eight, Master Rashi informed them. The qualifying matches were decided by drawing lots, and luck was also a key part of it. Gaku looked around as he followed the crowd and entered the venue. While walking, he looked for Tian Xinyan and Tietzu. 
why haven't I seen them yet? Could it be that they didn't come? They may have already entered the competition hall. You should be able to find them after going in. Master Rashi calmly said. Seeing Gaku nod, he stealthily slipped away, stuck a wig and dressed up as Jackie Chun, he then announced his name and entered the competition hall. In the competition hall, the contestants who came to participate in the tournament had already filled the hall. There were all kinds of strange-looking martial artists who had come from all over the world, there were werewolves, giants and even some ferocious beasts could be seen. It was an amazing sight to behold. However, these strange races inexplicably disappeared in the later stages of the Dragon Ball. The heaven and the earth was a chessboard, and they were no longer counted as protagonists. On the platform, the host first explained the rules of the competition. The 137 contestants who have signed up for the competition will be divided into four divisions, with two remaining contestants in each division to contest in the top eight. Then, all the contestants started to draw lots. Gaku, Krillin and Chi Chi respectively drew number 69, number 93 and number 124. Fortunately, they were not assigned to the same group. Sure enough, that guy named Gaku has also come to participate in this martial arts tournament, in the corner. Yam Sha who had cut his hair short stared at Gaku with flashing eyes as he muttered. This time, he has also come to participate in the competition. I trained for half a year, and I've also overcome my fear of women. Let's determine the victor on the arena. Yam Sha clenched his fists, looking eager. Due to the excess force, his fist slightly trembled. At this time, Gaku had already caught sight of Tian Xinyan and Tiutsu, he smiled and walked over. Well, you are here. I'll do my best in the competition later. It's you, Turtle School's boy. Although I must admit that you do indeed have some strength, the champion will definitely be me. Tian Xinyan coldly snorted and disdainfully walked away with Tiutsu. Outside the competition hall, Xiaoya led Xiling and Myers and walked over to Bulma. Upon seeing Xiaoya coming over who she assumed was a wealthy young master her countenance suddenly changed. Bulma, we meet again, Xiaoya walked over and greeted her. Hello. Bulma's mouth twitched as she greeted him. After I went back home, I asked my sister about you. So, you are really the owner of the Planet Hongshan Corporation. Sister also said that you are a very powerful martial artist, but I don't believe it. Xiaoya clearly seemed like a playboy, with two beautiful women accompanying on his left and right, and was quite different from the martial artists in her impression. Martial artists should be like Gaku, and at worst, they should be like Krillin, Bulma thought. Tights said that about me. Zayaya grinned as he inquired. Humph, it must be a lie, how can you compare to Gaku? Bulma muttered to herself. Her words, however, was heard by Zayaya, causing him to laugh. He didn't want to argue with such a little girl. She can think whatever she wants. Half a day later, the qualifiers in the competition hall were nearing completion, and finally, the top eight players that qualified in the preliminaries were Gaku, Krillin, Chi Chi, Tian Xinyan, Tietsu, Jackie Chun, Yam Sha, Nam, and the blonde beauty Ranfan. The Jira's races Jiren and Bacterian from the original work didn't qualify for top eight. Under Tietsu's secret manipulation, the fighting order of the eight contestants was fixed, which was as follows. The first match was Gaku vs Nam. The second match was Yam Sha vs Tietsu. The third match was Tian Xinyan vs Chi Chi. The fourth match was Krillin vs Jackie Chun. The eight contestants in the quarterfinal and the order of battles had changed dramatically from the original work. The official matches were scheduled to be held at the outdoor competition hall in the afternoon. Next was lunch time, and several people gathered together to have their lunch. Because the participants in the competition basically knew each other, they went to a nearby restaurant to eat. Xiaoya also mingled together with them. However, Tian Xinyan, Tietsu, and Yam Sha weren't together with everyone because they weren't familiar with them and also because of their unsociable personality. Chapter 312, During the Tournament In the afternoon, the quarterfinals of the martial arts tournament officially began. On the arena, the host enthusiastically announced with a microphone, I've kept everyone waiting for a long time. Now, the World Martial Arts Tournament which was last held five years ago is finally about to begin. This is the 21st Martial Arts Tournament. The top eight contestants have been chosen from the various martial artists that came from all over the world after having already contested in the qualifiers earlier this morning. The martial arts arena was more than 30 meters long and wide and was paved with special stone slabs. There was a green lawn between the martial arts arena and the perimeter wall, 
the staff members were stationed here to maintain the order of the tournament. The venue of the tournament had three sides facing the crowd and was blocked by a small brick wall, separating the tournament's martial arts platform from the audience. In the middle was a wide martial arts arena, and behind the martial arts platform was a high wall. There was only one entrance, leading directly to the martial arts hall, which was only accessible to the contestants and staff members. In the first match, Gaku from the Turtle School will fight against Nam from a village in the south. The contestant Gaku is the disciple of the famous master Rashi, while contestant Nam has overcome many difficulties on the way and entered the top eight. The host introduced both sides to the crowd. As the host announced the start of the competition, the packed crowd immediately became lively with excitement. Everyone swarmed to their seats, such that not even a drop of water could trickle through the surrounding area of the tournament venue. A blonde little girl holding a balloon stared blankly at the crowd. She wanted to squeeze in to watch the competition, but how could she compete with the enthusiasm of adults? She couldn't squeeze her way in for a long time, and could only stand behind, staring in confusion at everyone, she had unhappiness written all over her face. She hesitated for a long time, before turning around and leaving. On the other side, Bulma and Oolong struggled to squeeze to the front of the spectators' stand, while Ziaya and Xiling stared at the people around them. Immediately, a powerful pressure spread out from Ziaya. The crowd in front of them consciously got out of the way, creating a spacious path. Seeing that, Bulma and others were stunned. I don't like a crowded environment. Ziaya chuckled, the oppressive power of his consciousness deterred the people around them from getting near. Bulma opened her mouth and said in amazement, incredible. The blonde little girl had not gone far. When she saw the path in front suddenly become empty, she ran over happily, but when she got near, she bumped into an invisible key wall which had suddenly appeared, causing her to fall to the ground in a sorry state. Her mouth began to twitch as she almost cried out. Oh dear, how careless, are you hurt? Myers looked back and saw that a little girl had fallen to the ground, she pushed away Ziaya, helped the little girl up and brought her to the front seat. Thank you, sister. The little girl nodded and shouted excitedly as she could watch the tournament. Thump. The gong suddenly rang loudly as the host struck the sledgehammer several times on its surface. The competition has officially begun. The Indian-looking Nam participated in the martial arts tournament in order to win the prize money of 500,000 yuan in order to improve the living environment in his hometown. So, he went to the competition with the belief that he would definitely win. On the martial arts arena, Nam assumed an offensive and defensive stance just as the match began. He tried to gauge the strength of his opponent as his opponent assumed a pose. Nam then took the initiative to launch an attack, he leaned his body forward and fiercely attacked. He like a sharp arrow shooting out, or like a fast storm instantly arrived before Gaku and kicked. Gaku crooked his head as he looked at Nam, and his body swayed as he suddenly jumped seven or eight meters high into the sky, avoiding Nam's attack. Then, Gaku rushed back down with incredible speed and struck towards Nam. Nam did not expect Gaku to be so fast, so his movements couldn't help but slow down. He had fallen to a disadvantage from such a simple attack, and had no choice but dodge to the side for the time being. Bang! Goku's palm hit the ground and made a muffled sound. The stone slabs of the martial arts arena slightly loosened and several cracks appeared. Nam was shocked. He had researched the previous martial arts tournament and thought that it would be a breeze to win the championship in this present competition. However, just in the first match of the quarterfinals, he met such a strong opponent, so he had no choice but to be careful. Kaka. After Gaku landed on the ground, he then immediately turned around with one hand, suddenly changing direction, and just like a gust of wind, he disappeared. A powerful wind swept the sand upwards, and the audience had no choice but to close their eyes. Kakarot is much stronger than that Nam. There is no suspense in this match, Xiling narrowed her eyes and said with certainty. In the half year, Goku's skills had risen a lot, but it was still not enough in Xiling's eyes. Myers smacked her mouth and said, if he can't even win this kind of match, then Kakarot is useless. Xiling and Myers got into a heated argument as if they were masters of martial arts. Listening to them, Bulma rolled her eyes and mused, are they really martial artists? While they were arguing, the situation in the arena changed rapidly. Bang! Before the audience could react, Nam's body was sent flying high by Goku's whirlwind attack like a kite with a cut string, and then, it flew out of the martial arts arena and fell on the lawn outside. The audience below the stage saw Nam flying out of the arena and were stunned. They did not react for a while. However, after a while, 
they came back to themselves and erupted with enthusiastic applause. Contestant Nam has fallen out of the arena, therefore, contestant Gaku has won. The first match was over in just a few seconds, and the audience was still unable to digest this outcome. At this time, Master Rashi dressed as Jackie Chun found Nam at the back of the arena. After clearly understanding his situation, he gave Nam a Hoi Poi capsule to store water and told him to go back and solve the drought problem in his hometown. Next will be the match between Yam Sha and Tietsu. The host announced. This was another battle with a great disparity in strength between both sides. Although Yam Sha had painstakingly trained for half a year and increased his strength by leaps and bounds, his opponent was Tietsu. Even if Tietsu did not use his superpower, Yam Sha was still not his opponent. After all, Tietsu had been training with Tian Xinyan for so many years and had also trained under the guidance of Korin. His strength had long surpassed that of his peers. When the host announced the start of the second match, both Yam Sha and Tietsu went to the martial arts arena and then stood on either side of the martial arts arena. At the start of the battle, Yam Sha and Tietsu broke out in a fierce battle. Both sides exchanged blows without stopping, with after images continuously flashing on the arena. Many of their movements had already exceeded the limit of what ordinary humans could see with the naked eyes. Fighting with punches and kicks really gave the audience a feeling of hearty content. Hey! Yam Sha and Tietsu launched attacks, and their palms collided, producing a loud sound. Bang! The stone slabs under their feet suddenly broke, and the force made the shattered stones bounce up, flying off in all directions. A whirlwind gushed out from the place where their palms had hit, a violent gust of wind rising. Yam Sha was surprisingly sent flying backward, and after he spun a few times in the air, both of his hands touched the ground. He again quickly bounced up, and like a fast and violent cheetah, he swooped down towards Tietsu and engaged in a new round of battle. At this time, Tietsu, however, seemed to be floating in the air, not affected by gravity. It was the sky hovering art of the crane school. Wow, contestant Tietsu is unexpectedly floating in the sky, and this is not a trick. They deserve to be called world-class contestants, both of them are extremely outstanding. The host was holding a microphone and leaning on the edge of the martial arts arena. Due to the fierce battle on the arena, a whirlwind was raised, causing the host to have no choice but to stay far away from the center of the battle. Who the hell is this short guy? To think that he can float in midair, is it a superpower? Yam Sha's face was covered in sweat as he stared at Tietsu in midair with a grave expression. Because Tietsu was 7 or 8 meters above the ground, Yam Sha's usual attack method suddenly became ineffective. If I go on like this, the hope of winning will continue to decrease. It seems that I have to use my signature attack. Yam Sha's eyebrows gathered into a bunch, as he wiped the sweat from his face. His whole body was on alert, his eyes flashing with a radiance. Take my signature attack, Wolf Fang Fist. Yam Sha gave a loud shout, and his whole body erupted with a terrifying aura. His eyes flashed with a cold light as if he was a lone wolf from the wilderness, and a ruthless bloodthirsty aura stormed towards Tietsu. Bang! Yam Sha forcefully stamped on the ground with one foot and violently trembled, before shooting out like a pebble from a slingshot, quickly reaching the same height as Tietsu. Take my attack! Yam Sha shouted coldly. His five fingers bent into a claw like a ravenous wolf as he quickly and ruthlessly hit towards Tietsu's vitals. Chapter 313, Champion Yam Sha's attacks were powerful and fast, and his fists and claws were as hard as steel. Since his previous defeat in the hands of Gaku, he had been working hard to improve his wolf fang fist, and now, he had gotten some success in it. This fighting technique was as fast as a gale, and it was also like a ferocious wolf attacking, making the opponent feel like they were being swallowed by an endless sea and unable to avoid the ferocious attack. If it was an ordinary martial artist, he or she would have never been able to dodge this attack. But unfortunately, Yam Sha was facing Tietsu. After getting trained by Korin, not to mention superpower, but even his body's strength alone was already above Yam Sha's. Stop! Tietsu suddenly extended two fingers as he looked at Yam Sha who was a little far away. Suddenly, Yam Sha's movements turned sluggish as if his body was shackled by countless chains, causing him to feel stunned. A pause of only one-tenth of a second was enough to kill him. Tietsu chuckled and increased the power acting on Yam Sha. Bang! Yam Sha immediately plunged down from the sky, and with a loud breaking sound, the stone slabs on the ground shattered due to the enormous force of his descent. Due to the enormous force moved that acted on him, after Yam Sha knocked into the stone slabs, he didn't slow down and continued all the way to the outside of the arena, 
leaving a half a mile deep gully. Master Yam Sha! Outside the arena, Poer anxiously shouted, tears in his eyes. After a short period of silence, the crowd suddenly erupted into enthusiastic shouts. Contestant Yam Sha has fallen out of the arena. The second match, contestant Tietsu has won. Next, let's proceed to the third match, contestant Tian Xinyan vs contestant Chi Chi. The gong sounded and Tian Xinyan and Chi Chi commenced their battle. There was no suspense in this match. Tian Xinyan's battle power was much higher than Chi Chi's, so it was hardly long before Chi Chi lost. Master Rashi watched from the side of the arena with a grave expression and muttered, This Tian Xinyan is even more powerful than he was a few months ago. I'm not his match. Now is really the era of young people. Following the constant emergence of young talents such as Gaku and Tian Xinyan, Master Rashi couldn't help but feel the change of times. In the fourth match, Jackie Chun fought against Krillin, which was similar to the match in the original work, Jackie Chun won the fight. After four matches, the top four were decided, they were Gaku, Tietsu, Tian Xinyan, and Jackie Chun. There was a short break before the start of the semi-finals. Zayaya only gave the matches a cursory glance. In his mind, since before the tournament started, he had already known the result. Sure enough, the finalists were Gaku and Tian Xinyan, while Tietsu and Jackie Chun got defeated in the semi-finals. Hehe, he, this result is almost the same as the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament, but it has been brought forward ahead of time here. Now for the finals, contestant Gaku will fight against contestant Tian Xinyan. The host's voice had just fallen when Gaku and Tian Xinyan walked onto the arena. These battle represented a showdown between the Turtle School and the Crane School, the most powerful martial arts schools on earth. They had attracted the attention of countless people, as all kinds of praises and adulation fell in their ears. I will definitely be the champion of this tournament, standing on the arena, Tian Xinyan said, full confidence. His upper body was bare, and his arms were folded across his chest. The championship is mine, Gaku retorted, he refused to admit defeat. The level of this fight was expected to be very high. Gaku and Tian Xinyan stared at each other, and the air between them seemed to freeze. Shu. Gaku disappeared in a flash. He began to move at high speeds. There were only faint sounds of footsteps heard in the arena, but Gaku couldn't be seen. After image strike. Tian Xinyan laughed disdainfully. Then, he followed the high-speed movements. The people in the arena disappeared for a while. If it were not for the sounds of battle that erupted out from time to time and a big hole that suddenly appeared on the arena, the audience would have thought that no one was fighting in the arena. Quick, hurry up and record the battle scenes with the video camera. The host shouted anxiously, inwardly regretting that he did not make preparations early on. He had missed such wonderful scenes in vain. Hwalala. Tian Xinyan's three eyes kept rotating as he locked onto Goku's position, and then his foot lightly stepped on the ground, a deep and powerful explosive force surging out from the solace of his feet. Doden Ray. Tian Xinyan suddenly exclaimed. With an explosive sound, a dark red light beam shot out from Tian Xinyan's fingertips, and at the same time, he shot over like a lightning bolt. The stone slabs on the ground shattered and shot out in all directions under the pressure of the immense power, leaving behind a shallow hole, there were crisscrossed cracks around the hole. Gaku grinned, and at a very fast speed, he instantly changed his course and dodged Tian Xinyan's Doden Ray with just a hair-splitting gap. But at this time, Tian Xinyan miraculously appeared by Goku's side and punched with both of his fists. Bang! He hit the target. Gaku was struck head-on by Tian Xinyan. Their battle was extremely fast. Not even more than one second had elapsed on the tournament's arena, yet they had exchanged several blows, there was a slight pause, but they disappeared again soon after, with only the sounds of their exchange being heard by the crowd. They are so formidable, and their attacks are so fast. Krillin looked at Gaku and Tian Xinyan, who were continuously fighting on the arena, and cold sweat broke out on his head. Although Krillin's eyes could keep up with the speed of both sides, it was impossible for him to perform the same movements. Senior brother Gaku is really strong, but that Tian Xinyan seems to be even more powerful. Chi Chi's eyes flashed with a bright light. Their level is completely beyond their peers. I'm afraid that any one of them is already standing at the peak of the martial arts world. Jackie Chun looked solemn. What is even more terrifying is that they are still so young. Who knows what realm they will reach in the future. On the side, Yam Sha watched the battle in low spirits. His legs were shaking, and his heart was full of unwillingness and helplessness. 
Compared to Gaku and Tian Xinyan, he was really too far apart. Could it be that I really have no hope of defeating them? No, one of them is a disciple of Master Rashi, and the other is a disciple of Master Shen who is as equally famous as Master Rashi. If I can also obtain guidance from Master Rashi, maybe I will be able to surpass them. A strong thirst was suddenly birthed in Yam Sha's heart, perhaps, it was self-deception, but he knew that only by getting the guidance of a master could he have further possibilities of improvement. The Decisive Blow Tian Shenyan and Gaku both simultaneously used their strongest move, and suddenly, an earth-shaking pressure gushed out from both sides. They were separated at both ends of the arena. Gaku turned both of his hands into claws and slowly condensed energy into substance, while Tian Shenyan was also extremely serious as the fingers of both his hands joined into a triangle. The violent energies were accompanied by heaven-destroying and earth-extinguishing momentum, and as if a divine dragon was soaring into the sky, the energies flared in all directions, as a suffocating feeling sprang up unbidden in people's heart. Could this be, Master Rashi could clearly see the movements of both sides and couldn't help but shout, and as an intense uneasiness filled his chest, a dreadful guess appeared in his heart. Did Master Shen hand over even that move to him? Under the arena, Xiaoya's eyes lit up, and he smiled at Xiling. Look at Tian Xinyan's move. The energy gathered is actually several times your own energy. But the burden of such a high-intensity move on his body is very huge. Just like Super Kamehameha which was developed by Gaku in the later stages, the Tri-Beam by Tian Xinyan, Destructo Disc by Krillin, and Special Beam Cannon by Piccolo, were all formidable moves that could exhibit a destructive force several times that of the user's main battle power. Likewise, a little carelessness would cause the body to succumb to the pressure and collapse. Let's see. With the duo as the center, a powerful storm swept through the entire arena, causing a chaotic cloud of dust to spread out in all directions. The spectators had to protect their eyes with their hands. Ka. Me. Ha. Me. Ha. Tri beam. After Gaku and Tian Shenyan finished storing Ki, they both of them shouted before pushing out their powerful attacks. Two glaring energy waves suddenly shot out like roaring dragons. A dazzling flash of light instantly illuminated the entire venue of the tournament, forcing the spectators to close their eyes. Boom. Boom. The dazzling energy waves fiercely collided and immediately exploded. The shock waves generated by the explosion spread out in all directions with tremendous energy. For a moment, the violent hurricane which was mixed with deafening sounds swept through every corner, with dense smoke pervading the entire venue. Gradually, the smoke dissipated. Two people were standing on the arena while gasping for breath. However, Gaku was the first one to not withstand the heavy burden and fell down, but there was a content smile on his face. Gaku. Bulma shouted anxiously. Don't worry, he has just exhausted his stamina. He will be fine after resting for a while, Launch comforted Bulma as she could clearly see Goku's situation. UMM. Bulma was quiet, and her eyes were still full of worries. The result is out. Contestant Tian Xinyan has won, and the 21st World Martial Art Tournament's champion is contestant Tian Xinyan. The host jumped onto the martial arts arena and announced the result of the tournament in a loud voice. The whole audience was instantly stirred, and the sound of applause and cheers continued to resound. They felt it was a blessing of three lifetimes to be able to watch such an epic battle, the blood within their whole body was boiling. Chapter 314, The Little Girl Who Was Nearly Killed as the World Martial Arts Tournament ended, the crowd gradually dispersed. The little blonde girl, who was lucky to watch the whole tournament from the front of the stands because of Meyer's help, waved her farewell to Xiaoya and the others. Xiling stared at the receding back of the little girl and said with a smile, The little girl is really cute. Yet. Yeah. Xiaoya nodded, not paying much attention. After the tournament finished, seeing that the sky had become dark, Xiaoya found a hotel to stay in together with Master Rashi and others. Master Rashi. Where have you been? I went to the bathroom. You went to the bathroom for a whole day? I didn't see you all this time. Is Gaku okay? Bulma was supporting Gaku by his arm because he was exhausted from the tournament, right now, he didn't even have the strength to walk. Zayaya said, it's okay, I think his body is very strong, so he will be fine if he has enough to eat. Simple-minded. Bulma snapped in dissatisfaction causing Xiaoya to chuckle, and then he led Xiling and Myers toward his room. When Xiaoya arrived at the door, he found Tian Xinyan waiting for him. Teacher. Tian Xinyan greeted Xiaoya. 
as he had completed the two tests ordered by Zayaya, he could now officially call Zayaya teacher. Your skills are not bad, but in some cases, going too far is just as bad as not doing enough. Like, in today's competition, you could have had an easier victory, but in the end, both sides suffered. Zayaya gave pointers to Tian Xinyan, as Tian Xinyan listened seriously. After going back, I'll train you again properly, now go back and rest. Yes. Tian Xinyan got his wish fulfilled, so he responded with excitement. After greeting Xiling and Myers, he returned to his room. The night was silent. Next day, Zayaya and the others made preparations to return to their villa. However, Zayaya thought, it has been such a long time since I came out for a walk, I should buy some gifts for Xiling and Myers to bring back. In order to give them a pleasant surprise, Zayaya sent Xiling and Myers back first, and afterward, he went shopping in the nearby city. The cities that hosted the World Martial Arts Tournament were generally quite developed, with convenient transportation which was easily accessible to contestants. Zayaya strolled around the city and stared at the shops filled with gorgeous items on both sides of the road, after a while, he then randomly entered a jewelry store. Under the enthusiastic marketing of the store clerk, Zayaya handed out a large amount of money, packed the most exquisite items in the store and walked out. The store clerk looked fervent as he sent this big customer to the door. At this time, they heard the sounds of police sirens, and afterward, they saw a white van madly dashing over, instantly arriving at the north side of the street from the south side, a police car was behind in hot pursuit, firing warning shots at the white van. It's a robber. They are really arrogant to do this in broad daylight. Zayaya glanced over and then ignored it. At this time, a police officer hit the tire of the van with a bullet, causing the driver of the van to slam on the steering wheel, however, the van had already lost control as it rushed towards the door of a storefront in the corner. At this time, a little girl holding a balloon came out from the door and saw the car that was rushing over. The little girl was dumbfounded, and she stood there frozen. Just as the little girl was about to die under the wheels of the van, Zayaya like a lightning bolt swiftly appeared in front of the van, picked up the little girl and jumped to the side. Bang! The van crashed into the stone wall of the store. Consequently, the front of the van bent inwards severely due to the collision, and the entire wall collapsed. The little girl looked on dumbly, and her legs felt weak as she fell to the ground. Suddenly, she broke into tears after a while. Boohoo! Mama! Seeing that something had happened, the crowd in the surroundings gathered over. The police also got out of the car and arrested the robbers in the van. Zayaya looked at them and laughed as it wasn't of any concern to him, and then he looked at the little girl with a slight frown. Well, don't cry, your family will be here soon, unable to endure, Zayaya said. The little girl however ignored him and continued to cry, her golden hair and tears mixed together and glued to her delicate cheeks. Zayaya squatted down and picked up the little girl and comforted, Little girl, don't cry. Your mother will come back soon. Really? Mama will be here soon. The little girl stopped sobbing and asked with a puzzled face. Yes. Zayaya nodded. He didn't like crying girls, especially little girls. Xiling used to be obedient when she was young, so he didn't even need to coax her. Not really understanding, the blonde little girl stood on one side as she, with the balloon in her hand, waited for her mama to come. At this time, Zayaya sized up the little girl, and couldn't help but laugh as he mused, isn't this the girl from yesterday? The balloon in the little girl's hand was also the one from yesterday, so Zayaya tried to engage in small talk with her, trying to keep her in good humor. However, after a long time had passed, her parents still didn't come. The little girl's eyes reddened, she was about to cry again. Upon seeing this, Zayaya hastily took out an exquisite white necklace from his bag. It was a crescent moon-shaped necklace. Just with a glance at its luxurious craftsmanship, it could be discerned that it wasn't cheap. I'll give this necklace to you, so don't cry. Zayaya knelt down and put the necklace around her neck. After hanging the necklace, sure enough, the little girl did not cry. She giggled and grasped the necklace, revealing a lovely smile. This kid must have been pampered and spoiled since childhood, Zayaya looked at the blonde-haired little girl and thought. After a little while, a beautifully dressed woman rushed over in a panic, hugged the little girl, and continually thanked Zayaya. Zayaya waved his hand and was about to leave. At this time, the little girl said in a crisp and childish voice which was similar to that of an Oriole pleasant to hear, Big brother, thank you. I like your gift very much. 
Zayaya couldn't help but chuckle as it was just a necklace. He waved his hand and left, leaving this minor matter behind him. Back at the villa estate, Zayaya saw that Tian Xinyan and Tsu had been waiting there for a long time. He then began training Tian Xinyan. Generally speaking, Tian Xinyan's latent talent is not bad, and his training skills were also remarkable, but in the eyes of a great expert like Zayaya, all his movements were full of loopholes. Use your full strength to attack me. Yes. Tian Xinyan shouted earnestly, and then, he held his breath and concentrated. In the next second, he quickly moved, and the spacious courtyard was immediately filled with Tian Xinyan's afterimages. Xiaoye nodded slightly and thought, Tian Xinyan's basic skills are relatively solid, but his speed is as slow as a snail's. Each of his movements is like a film that has been slowed down by hundreds of times. At this time, Xiaoye casually pointed his finger forward and touched Tian Xinyan's chest, causing Tian Xinyan to lose the motivation to advance. Afterward, Xiaoye hit Tian Xinyan's knee, causing him to lay down on the ground. Zayaya shook his head and reprimanded, It won't do, your reaction is not fast enough. Real martial artists would have turned their movements into instincts long ago. Only beginners will make attacking or defensive posture every time before the fight starts. Again. It's wrong again, you must leave some leeway for yourself when attacking. I am making you reduce unnecessary movements, not to make you completely undefended. Again. In the case of certainty, the attack is the best defense. Those who seize the preemptive opportunity are the best martial artists. Zayaya was constantly reprimanding, and Tian Xinyan also kept pondering over Zayaya's words. Although every attack of his was turned upside down, Tian Xinyan's gains were too big, and he felt that his mastery of martial arts was constantly improving at a speed never seen before. Education was a two-sided affair that concerned both teacher and student. If the teacher was very able but the student was incompetent, then the teacher wouldn't feel like teaching and the student also wouldn't like learning. Likewise, if the student had a heaven-warping talent but the teacher was mediocre, then it'll be hard for the student to have any achievements. A lot of matters in the world would only become legends when coexisting as a pair. The best example would be Huang Shigong and Zhang Liang. If Zhang Liang had returned to the bridge located in Xiaopai and Huang Shigong wasn't waiting for him, it would have portrayed Zhang Liang as someone who thought too highly of himself, and also as someone who, although young, had a complex thought process. Likewise, if Huang Shigong was waiting and did not see Zhang Liang return, it would have portrayed Huang Shigong as a fool that was trying to learn how to fish like Zhang Zia, yet failing to catch any fish. It was only when Zhang Liang and Huang Shigong had reached a certain level of enlightenment and were absolutely certain of each other's expected reaction that this event finally became a legend. Just like now, Xiaoya was quite insightful and could teach students in accordance with their ability and Tian Xinyan was also talented and willing to train hard. The teacher and student duo both had a significance to each other. Sure enough, teacher is a hidden expert on earth. But are there also many people like this? Tian Xinyan pondered. Previously, from Master Shen's speculations, he thought that Xiaoya and the others were experts from sacred land of Korin, but since he climbed Korin Tower, he realized that the strength of his teacher was not as it seemed. Meanwhile, at the Kame House, Krillin and Chi Chi continued to train under Master Rashi, and at the same time, there was one more person who joined them in training, he was Yam Sha. After the martial arts tournament ended, Yam Sha also joined the Turtle School. While Gaku, after martial arts tournament ended, set foot on the road of self-training, and also, he took the Dragon Ball radar that Bulma gave him to find the Dragon Ball left behind by his grandfather. Chapter 315, Destruction of Galactic Patrol Organization Center Galaxy. Near the Galactic Patrol Organization's headquarters, three individuals shrouded in blue lights were gathered together. They each had orange hair, light blue skin and wore copper-colored earrings. If Zayaya was here, he would have definitely recognized them. These three were Zanja's companions, the Galaxy Soldier Bujin, Kagu, and Beto. The short and thin Bujin stared at the distant starry sky and said, Ahead is the location of the Galactic Patrol Organization's headquarters. The place where our boss is sealed is likely in this starfield. Beto nodded and said, The center galaxy has the smallest area among the several galaxies, and we can find boss soon if we search it inch by inch. Why bother? We can directly charge to the headquarters of the Galactic Patrol Organization and ask for the information about the planets that have appeared in the last 200,000 years. I don't believe they have the courage to not give it. The big bearded Beto laughed and responded, Yes we should directly ask the Galactic Patrol Organization. 
the three of them talked and laughed, not putting the galactic patrol in their eyes. During the time they were talking and laughing, their figures soon appeared in the range of the radar of the galactic patrol. Suddenly, an intense alarm resounded and the entire spinning top-shaped headquarters of the galactic patrol organization erupted into chaos. Warning, there are intruders breaking in. Warning, there are intruders breaking in. The Galactic Patrol's warriors went into action one by one, and immediately intercepted Bujin, Kagu, and Beto. At the same time, they scanned the strength of the three people. The information from the skin was then quickly transmitted to the nearby mercenaries. This was the biggest crisis that the Galactic Patrol organization had encountered in the past few years. It was more bloody and cruel than the last time when Zayaya had arrived. Soon, there were countless big fireballs flashing in the starry sky. Amidst the flames, a spine-shilling and frightening might suddenly rose, as if a beast of the abyss had opened its bloody maw. Without being able to put up any resistance, the large number of the Galactic Patrol spaceships and the mercenaries who came to provide assistance were buried in the huge and beautiful explosion. Ha ha ha! These weak ants are annoying! Bujin arrogantly shouted while wreaking havoc. The energy bombs from his hand never stopped, and wherever he saw a living being, he would throw it towards them. In a short while, the living beings that had died by his hands were countless. Beto looked indifferently, with a faint smile on his face. Bujin, move quickly. After finishing off these people, you should enter the Galactic Patrol headquarters. All right. Bujin's attack became even more unbridled. The huge crimson fireballs rose one by one, they flickered for a moment, turning dim, and then became deathly still, before falling down just like a meteor. It was very beautiful. Let's go. The rest of the forces here have been annihilated, so we can proceed to the headquarters. After saying that, the three of them rushed to the spinning top-shaped galactic patrol organization. Inside the headquarters, in a beehive-like hexagonal room. The jellyfish-like galactic king nervously paced back and forth. The outcome of the battle outside had been one-sided. Having learned of the situation, he knew that the galactic patrol was facing an unprecedented disaster. Is there no one who can stop them? Galactic King sighed helplessly. The enemies that appeared this time were too strong, and even the most powerful fighters in the Galactic Patrol organization were no match for them. Moreover, it was now impossible to expect any support from distant starfields, as distant water couldn't put out a fire close at hand. At this time, Jaco and a commander with long antennas on his head were standing in front of Galactic King. Jaco said, Galactic King, now is not the time to hesitate, so please immediately leave using the spaceship. The spaceship used by Jaco and others was the most advanced spaceship in the universe. It took only seven days to traverse the entire universe with it. It was famed for its the speed, with which it could easily traverse an interstellar journey of half or one year, that's why the communication work of the Galactic Patrol had always been the fastest. This, the Galactic Patrol organization can't collapse at this time. The Galactic King hesitated, once the headquarter is destroyed, the Galactic Patrol organization would exist in name only, and also, how many members would be willing to continue to serve the organization. By then, I'm afraid that those people at the Commerce Alliance would be elated, the Galactic King said dejectedly. Who the hell are they, and why are they so powerful? Jaco glared, his golden eyes shone like a light bulb. Galactic King sighed and said, those people are the galaxy soldiers who had once turned the entire galaxy upside down, and our Galactic Patrol organization was established to guard the planet that has their boss, Bojack, sealed. Bojack. Jaco looked confused. Galactic King said, Bojack is a wicked villain who had traveled through the four major galaxies, north, south, east, west and attempted to destroy them. He had great ambitions, moreover, he committed atrocities that threatened the entire galaxy. Even the sins committed by the Frost Demon race, later on, can't be compared with his. Then, 200,000 years ago, the four great Kais took advantage of him being seriously injured and jointly sealed him on a planet at the end of the galaxy. 200,000 years ago. That's a really long time. Jaco exclaimed. Yeah, so many years have passed, and how many people know about his existence? If we let his companions destroy the seal, then Bojack will come back, which is really a disaster for the entire galaxy. But we don't have the strength to stop them. Jaco and the commander next to him glanced at each other and suddenly stepped forward and tied up the Galactic King up. Sorry, Galactic King, the Galactic Patrol organization may not be able to survive, so we must take you away. We of you. A few days later, 
the news of the destruction of the Galactic Patrol was passed among the major forces. Some people were happy while some were filled with grief. The forces that were long looking forward to the destruction of the Galactic Patrol wantonly celebrated and cheered, while the forces which maintained the peace of Galaxy grieved. The order of the Galaxy was thrown into chaos. Galactic Patrol has been destroyed. When Xiaoyu received this news, it was already ten days after the incident. He stared at the document in his hand for a while with indifference, and then, he put it aside as if nothing had happened. Whether the Galactic Patrol was destroyed or not had no direct impact on his planet Hongshan. Although the two sides were in a cooperative relationship, it was only making use of each other. Planet Hongshan didn't necessarily have to stick out for them. They can do whatever they want, as long as they don't provoke Planet Hongshan. The Scions were not a kind-hearted race, nor would they carry any big responsibility on their shoulders, they were just a fighting race, so only fighting was enough. Meanwhile, at the center galaxy, there was a dark red planet here. Although there was starlight shining here, it was still very dark. If Bujin and the others hadn't received the real information, they really wouldn't have known that a planet was unexpectedly hidden under this darkness. According to the information, our boss is very likely to have been sealed on this planet, Bujin said in delight as he pointed at the inconspicuous planet ahead, the corner of his mouth slightly raised. There is a seal here which was jointly created by the four Kais, so we will need to cooperate in order to break it, Kago looked at it with a serious expression and said. Their surroundings were blurry and space was extremely complex. Because it was a seal created jointly by four Kais, there were only two ways to open it. The first way required any of the four Kais to lose their life, causing the seal to automatically collapse with the lapse of time, the second way was to forcefully eradicate the seal. With the joint effort of Bujin, Kagu, and Bido, any planet could be destroyed. In a flash, Bujin, Kagu, and Bido separated, scattering around the dark red planet as they exercised their power at the same time. Immediately, a distant and tranquil but heaven-shattering aura suddenly erupted out, turning the surrounding space extremely unstable. An attack landed on the seal created by the four Kais, and the powerful energy was like pattering rain, which continuously eroded away the creases in the space. With the power of the three people, the dark red planet shrunk to a big circle, and the seal became pale and fragile as the paper on a window. Before long, the seal was broken. Wheeze. The dark red planet became even darker, and then, it suddenly exploded into a blood-red flash, when the weather changed, deep in the starry sky, a gloomy and cold wind rose. The cold wind brushed past the soul, and the ice-cold and biting chill caused people to tremble. Chapter 316, Metasibaman As the seal broke, an evil wind fiercely blew, steadily increasing in intensity, and in a flash, the whole planet burst open. A dark gate appeared and slowly opened, seemingly like a gateway to hell, and at that moment, countless small and black hands extended out from it, letting out shrill demonic roars. Hiss! A soul-stirring sound was suddenly transmitted into the universe like an invisible ripple, and following that, a large and pitch-black mass of stinky matter shot out from the center of the planet. At the same time, a large cloud of green fog rose at the center of the planet. The fog and the pitch-black matter fused together into a ball, seething like boiling water, and soon, a man over two meters tall appeared in the starry sky of the universe. The man wore a black headscarf, white trousers, and a blue cloak, the cloak hung down to the solace of his feet and a black belt was tied at his waist, fluttering freely. When the man appeared, he burst into fierce and insane laughter, and then he threw down an energy ball. The dark red planet below instantly turned into ashes. Ha ha ha, I, Bojack have finally broken through the seal. An extremely evil and violent whistling sound spread out, and the entire center galaxy sunk into a restless atmosphere. Seeing that their boss had broken away from his predicament, Bujin and the others excitedly surrounded him, saying, Boss, we have finally rescued you. Bojack nodded, looked at his former younger brothers and said, Ha ha ha, this time I was able to get out of this predicament thanks to you. Hum. Why is Zanja not here, her injury has not recovered yet. Bujin shook his head and said, Maybe, we met her a few years ago, and then, we separated to look for boss. She was in charge of the East Area, but afterward, we lost contact. After listening to him, Bojack pondered for a moment and said, For now, there is no need to be concerned about her. Tell me, what happened in these past few years? Yes, boss. Bujin nodded and gave him rough details of the situation in the universe. After he finished listening, Bojack muttered for a moment and said, It seems that things have changed a lot. 
so, wait for me to first train for a while and recover to my peak. I must find those kais and settle things with them this time. Yeah, those kais are really too daring. We should teach them a lesson. Umm, this debt must be properly settled. There are also those super scions, they are culprits too, Bujin added. Of course, I will not forget them, Bojack said with an evil smile. Previously, when they met a red-haired scion, they got seriously injured, and later on, Bojack was again attacked by a golden-haired super scion. Fortunately, Bojack didn't perish, however, he bumped into the Kais shortly after and was sealed away by them for all these years. Bojack gazed into the bright and vast starry sky and said, as the corners of his mouth slightly curled, of course, at that time the entire galaxy will be under our rule. Meanwhile, East Kai's planet. The dumpy East Kai knew that Bojack had been released the moment the seal's energy disappeared. Damn it, Bojack has gotten out. Later on, the mortal world of my East area is going to suffer a disaster. East Kai was anxiously pacing around in circles. This time they wouldn't have such good luck like before when they happened to run into the seriously injured Bojack, thus, his release from the seal was a very dangerous outcome for the Kais. I should quickly contact Grand Kai. Now, I can only get help from Grand Kai's planet and the Heaven's Warriors. After pondering over it again and again, East Kai felt that only the Heaven's Warriors could contend against Bojack. In Heaven, there were powerful warriors of all ages. These warriors had achieved great merits during their lifetime, and they were able to keep their physical body to train in Heaven, there was no lack of powerful people amongst them. South Kai's planet, the tall and square-faced South Kai was also anxious. West Kai's planet, West Kai wearing a monocle, also began to contact Grand Kai. North Kai's planet, North Kai, who never again observed the mortal world since the god of destruction Beerus appeared on planet Vegeta, was startled awake by the energy from the seal breaking. Aya, what's going on? How could that bastard seal be broken? North Kai was shocked, and then, he used his antennas to observe the mortal world, however, the changes that occurred in the north area left him stunned. Uh huh, where is Frisia? And King Cold, Cooler, Slug, how did their forces change so much? Uh, -huh, only Frisia is still alive. Were they killed by Beerus Sama? But if Beerus Sama killed them, then why didn't he kill that bastard, Frisia, too? North Kai was puzzled. In fact, he didn't know that most of these people were killed by Zayaya. While the four Kais were anxiously pacing around in circles, in the distant starry sky of the east area, an area covered by a nebula. Inside the Big Get Star's central experiment area. In the huge cultivation containers, the emerald green half-bio and half-mechanical Cybomen were continuously receiving energy from the outside world. The 10,081 cultivation containers were neatly arranged in an orderly manner. The emerald meta Cybomen were almost formed. From their appearances, they were actually very similar to Frisia's final state. Sir Manuel, these meta Cybomen will soon be cultivated, Maunder reported with great enthusiasm. Manuel smiled and said, How is the energy of these Cybomen, and can you guarantee that they would be absolutely obedient? Maunder patted his chest and assured, Please be rest assured, sir. These meta Cybomen have biochips installed in their brains, so they will absolutely be loyal and devoted to Big Get Star. Speaking of energy intensity, Maunder smiled again and continued, The energies instilled in this 10,081 meta Cybomen have already reached an astonishing 170 million energy intensity but it hasn't reached the upper limit yet. We prepared a metasibomen for energy testing and found that a maximum of 1 billion energy intensity could be instilled in it. Maunder said, his face showing an incredulous expression. What kind of life form is that headless corpse which was obtained from planet Bahert? The metasibomen that received his cells could unexpectedly withstand such a huge infusion of energy intensity, Maunder mused. It must be known that the most powerful Cybomen of Big Get Star could only be infused with an energy intensity of 140,000. Ha ha ha, increase the energy input, with this 10,081 meta Cybomen, the entire galaxy will be ours. Also, the news coming from our sources that the Galactic Patrol organization has been destroyed is really a heaven-sent opportunity. Listening to him, Maunder roared with laughter. Isn't this an opportunity granted to us by heaven? Manuel mused. A month later, all the 10,081 metasibomen of Big Get Star had grown. As the door of the cultivation container opened, the liquid inside poured out, and the thin cables connected to the nerves of the metasibomen fell off after infusion. The 10,081 metasibomen lined up in a square formation, 
looking spectacular. These metasibomin belong to the category of half bio and half mechanical life forms. They had taut muscles, and a slender build, looking like they were filled with strength. They also had blood red gemstone like eyes and a cold hearted gaze, like gods looking down on all living beings. Monder, first sent 4,000 metasibomin to test their power. Let the targets be the several major planets in the east area. Manuel coldly gave the order and selected four prominent planets from the east area starry skies map. Oh, and send another thousand metasibomin to planet Hongshan and wipe out all the scions there. Manuel ordered once again. Sir Manuel, sending a thousand metasibomin, wouldn't it be a little too much? Not too much. After conquering planet Hongshan, you should also proceed to capture the surrounding starfield, after hiding for so long, it is time to show our existence. Yes, sir. I will order Saibaman number one to know 5000. On Earth's side. Four months had passed since the end of the World Martial Arts Tournament. One year ago, the Dragon Ball had recovered, so Gaku was looking for the other Dragon Balls using the Dragon Ball radar. Gaku got to know a red-haired little girl named Suno in frigid weather, broke through the muscle tower and rescued Android 8 from inside it. However, he inadvertently offended the Red Ribbon Army, and a string of plots targeting the Dragon Balls on Gaku began. As a result, Gaku, at this time, had no choice but to go to West City to seek help from Bulma because of the damage on the Dragon Ball radar. Wow, Gaku, you came to West City to see me. Bulma happily received Gaku, and then proudly showed off her new invention. What is this? Gaku pointed at the watch on Bulma's wrist. Bulma wagged her finger and said, This is my latest invention, the microband. Then she proceeded to test it in front of Gaku, and suddenly, Bulma shrunk to the size of a fist after she activated the microband. Chapter 317, Attacking Planet Hongshan Gaku curiously watched as Bulma shrunk to the size of a plastic figurine. He reached out his hand and grabbed her, squeezing her in his palm as he mused, She has really become smaller. Let me go. You will kill me if you squeeze so hard, Bulma bellowed in anger. Gaku smiled and let go of his hand. Bulma deactivated the microband and recovered to her original size, and then, she changed to a revealing dress. Since you are here, I'll have to prepare a good feast for you, afterward, I will go with you to find the Dragon Balls. You want to go too? Of course. I've been bored to death by staying at home alone. After that, Bulma's mother warmly welcomed Gaku with fruit juice in her hands. So, this is the Gaku that Bulma often mentions. Do you want to be Bulma's boyfriend? Mom, what are you saying? Bulma snapped at her mom. Dr. Brief also came over and said with a smile, Bulma is so fierce that no one will want her in the future. You don't have to care about that. Gaku, we are going to look for the Dragon Balls. Not able to stand her parents anymore, Bulma pulled Gaku out of the house with a backpack. Gaku smiled at Dr. Brief and summoned the flying Nimbus, while Bulma shrunk once again and hid in his collar. If you collect the Dragon Ball this time, remember to wish for a beautiful woman and bring her back. Dr. Brief shouted with a cigarette dangling from the corners of his mouth. Enough, shameless old man. Bulma scolded in response. As Gaku and Bulma were sitting on the flying Nimbus, Gaku smiled and said, Your parents are really interesting. Now, a year later, Gaku and Bulma once again set out on a journey to find the Dragon Balls. They charged through underwater mechanisms and entered a place where pirates had hidden some treasures. A fortune was already accumulated there, and later on, they met the world's number one assassin, Mercenary Tao, who Gaku easily defeated. Afterward, Gaku heard about the legend of Korin Tower from UPA's father, Bora, and vaguely remembered that Master Rashi had also reminded him of it, so he climbed Korin Tower to receive pointers from Korin. After destroying the Red Ribbon Army, Gaku sent Bulma back to school while he himself proceeded on his training alone. Planet Hongshan After Xiaoya passed on several months of martial arts experience to Tian Xinyan, he sent Tian Xinyan to train by himself, while he himself returned to planet Hongshan with Xiling and Myers. During his time on Earth, Xiaoya faintly felt that he had already touched on the barrier of Super Scion 2. However, he had no idea when he would actually break through, so, he returned to planet Hongshan, intending to fully concentrate on it. He planned to use the training environment there to fully concentrate on training and eventually make a breakthrough. The Super Scion transformation is a process of superimposing strength on the normal state. The burden on the body will increase as the strength superposition increases. Without a strong body, 
forcefully transforming into Super Sion will directly cause the body to collapse at the moment of transformation. Xiaoya understood this clearly. Theoretically, Sion's above 100,000 battle power already had the qualifications to transform into Super Sion, but it often required 3 million battle power to really make a breakthrough, this was the minimum condition under which extreme anger acted as a catalyst. Xiaoya understood that if he wanted to break through to Super Sion 2, he needed to strengthen his body further. The reason for this was because, at the root, whether it was Super Sion 2 or Super Sion 3, they were all only continuations of the Super Sion realm. They could be regarded as the same stage, but they were somewhat different in the amplification of power, to sum it up, it was the enhancement of Qi. But such a transformation would eventually have a limit, as the physical body can't bear the burden endlessly. As a result, the Super Sion 3 transformation was the stage with the greatest burden on the body. In the training room, Xiaoya was sitting cross-legged on the floor and was experiencing the movement of Qi within his body under the high-gravity environment, while constantly pondering. Like spinning silk from cocoons, he was constantly sorting out his own situation. Super Scion's most perfect state should be Super Scion full power i.e. the first grade of Super Scion. At that time, the whole body's energy can be perfectly controlled. Compared to Super Scion 1's preceding stages, it is even more perfect, while Super Scion 2 can be regarded as a further expansion of transformation on the basis of full power Super Scion. At this time, the power is too strong the key explosion is exaggerated, and the overflowing energy can cause the abnormal phenomenon of lightning, which is not a perfect control. When it comes to Super Scion 3, the pressure on the body will increase further, energy is more difficult to control, and the frenzied energy would not only rampage outside the body but also within the body. In this stage, the transformation has the greatest burden on the body, so the consumption of physical strength is also extreme, Xiaoya muttered to himself, as he pondered. In essence, Full Power Super Scion has the most compatible balance between power after key explosion and self-control, and with an even stronger level of key explosion, although one can gain a stronger external strength for a short time, it has already broken this balance. This balance. It can't last long. Xiaoya mused. Based on this estimation, Xiaoya felt that it was impossible to attain the so-called Super Scion 4 because Super Scion 3 was the limit of what the body could bear. If a more overbearing transformation was activated, the body would directly collapse at the moment of transformation. Unless Super Scion 4 was an evolution into another creature, like the gorilla in GT, but whether this could be considered an evolution or moving backward, no one could say. In future upgrades, the Super Scion's transformation would eventually have a limit. By then, normal state would be the only way to increase strength. But what if the increase in normal state also reaches a limit? Xiaoya sighed. There were only two ways for a Super Scion to become powerful. One was to upgrade their transformation and develop a new transformation state, but the premise was to be able to withstand the pressure brought by transformation, while the second way was to increase strength in normal state, and when both reach their limit, it will be impossible to simply enhance the physical body. But what made Xiaoya uneasy was that after becoming Super Scion, he found that the improvement of normal state was getting slower and slower. Take the transformation of Gaku in the original work as an example, whether it was Super Scion 1 at the beginning or the later Super Scion 2 or 3, he basically improved his strength by breaking through the transformation state, and he continuously exerted strength many times under normal state until he attained Super Scion 3. Due to the problem of endurance, it was impossible to further develop higher multiple transformations, while the increase in his battle power under normal state was extremely slow. Now, Xiaoya was facing the same problem. His battle power in normal state had very little improvement. Let's leave this alone for now. I should put it off until I have transformed into Super Scion 2. Xiaoya put down his worries. Presently, he still had a lot of room for improvement, so the stages after Super Scion 3 could be put off for the time being. After a serious workout, Xiaoya came out with a towel draped over his shoulders and saw that Charlene and several senior officers of the Guardian Corps had arrived at his home. Sir Xiaoya, this is the data of Planet Onction's Scions. Charlene took out a stack of documents and said respectfully. Xiaoya flipped through the documents and noted down the overall situation of Planet Onction's Scions in recent years. Now, there were 30,240 Scions on Planet Hongshan, which included mostly children, this was thanks to the contributions of the female Scions over the years. Of the 30,240 Scions, 28,108 of them were ordinary warriors, 2,100 were elite warriors, 28 were super warriors, 
and four were super scions. Compared to twelve years ago, planet Hongshan had grown in strength many times over. Oh, by the way, did the people of Big Get Star come here recently, asked Ziaya. Yes, but they were sent away by us. Let the scions outside pay attention as these technological civilizations are very frightening to a certain extent, Ziaya said in a serious tone. The androids developed by Dr. Jero of Earth, the ancient warriors, galaxy soldiers, made by the Fadea people, and the Metacooler made by Big Get Star in the original work had strengths greater than the average Super Scion, and they were also very difficult to deal with. At this moment. Boom. Suddenly, Planet Hongshan trembled, and following the tremor was a sharp sound like a kettle boiling, then, a dazzling light spot suddenly rose on the surface of the reddish-black colored planet's surface. What happened? Sir, Planet Hongshan has received attacks from external forces, and many life forms with unknown energy levels have landed on the planet. Members of Guardian Corps and Special Battle Squadron have already been dispatched, but they are not a match for them. Someone soon reported the news. Ziaya's face immediately turned cold, and a cold light flashed in his pitch black eyes, as he exuded a frightening aura in all directions. After the Luther, the Frost Demon, invaded planet Hongshan so many years ago, there is still someone who dares to attack planet Hongshan again? They must really be tired of living. Charlene and the other officers were also filled with indignation. Charlene, tell the warriors to prepare for all-out combat. Yes. Planet Onction's forces were quickly mobilized. Ziaya, Xiling, Myers, Zanja, Bardock, and others all went to the front lines. When they saw the intruders from far away, Ziaya's handsome face showed a surprised expression. He already had a vague guess about the identities of the intruders. Is that... Whoosh. Their line of sight became clear. A green figure stood on a mountain slope, sweeping his eyes ruthlessly at the surrounding scions, he had a bright emerald green metallic body, with an appearance somewhat similar to Frisia. Chapter 318, Metacooler This is... Metacooler. As he got a clear look at the enemy's appearance, Ziaya's pupils suddenly contracted and his countenance turned gloomy. He pointed at the invaders ahead and said, That's Metacooler. It seems that Big Get Star is behind this. But isn't Cooler already dead? Hearing Cooler's name, Myers was startled. Isn't that the guy who was trampled to death by me? Is he a bio warrior like me? Zanja was interested. Yes, Ziaya affirmed. Ziaya was also sizing up Meta Cooler who was different from the one in the original work. These Meta Coolers don't have any self awareness. They are Meta Cybomin controlled via chips. The real cooler has long been killed by Zanja. These metacoolers are killing machines with only cooler's outer appearance. Ziaya's heart was like a bright mirror, and then he tried to use the secret skill Spirit Eye to observe the energy intensity of the metacoolers. Fortunately, Big Get Star's Cybomin were half bio and half metal, so Spirit Eye's secret skill was still effective. Meta Cybomin battle power, 1 billion. Their strength was not weak, instead, they were actually stronger than cooler. Everyone, be careful, these guys have 1 billion battle power. Tell every scion to withdraw, Ziaya frowned as he relayed the information. Bardock and others were all greatly surprised. 1 billion battle power. Only Ziaya, Zanja, and the fusion miling on planet Hongshan had the qualifications to fight them, while the super scion Bardock and the rest didn't have sufficient strength to participate in the battle. Quick, all the scions get back. Ziaya, Zanja, Xiling, and Myers stepped forward. We have to deal with them as quickly as possible because their numbers are too much. We are responsible for several people, so we can't let them damage the planet too much. Yes. It's only one billion energy. They are no more than toys, Zanja said disdainfully. Ziaya glanced at her coldly, and Zanja sensibly closed her mouth. After that, their auras erupted out, raising a spiraling airflow which caused the clouds in the sky to surge like ocean waves. Surrounded by a golden blaze, Ziaya's imposing aura became even more powerful, it erupted out based on full power Super Scion, with his green eyes full of coldness. Hwalala. Myling, who was a fusion of Xiling and Myers, also transformed into Super Scion. Wow, you both have become so powerful. Zanja exclaimed. As a bio-warrior, she didn't have the ability to transform. Her body's function restricted her such that she couldn't become stronger. She was envious of Ziaya and Myling's exploding strength. The metacoolers were expressionless, they had stiff expressions, but their metallic glossy faces revealed an eerie chill. 
besides the combat skills in their brains, all their thoughts were controlled by Big Get Star's central computer. Roar. Like a ferocious beast, Metacooler let out piercing roar. With a wave of his hand, a large expanse of sparkling energy created a huge sphere in the sky, and the next second, the astonishing power rushed towards Zayaya and others. Facing this, Zayaya and the others sneered and casually waved their arms, sending the energy ball flying. If they were fighting on an ordinary planet, the energy emitted would have instantly devastated the surrounding terrain, transforming it to ravines, and also caused towering mountain peaks to become oceans. However, it was planet Hongshan, and after the strengthening by Shenren, the durability of the planet became extraordinarily strong. An orange glow appeared, and the enormous expanse of energy, swatted by Zayaya, hit the ground and turned into a large mass of smoke before scattering. The planet only slightly trembled a few times and soon recovered its tranquility under the restoration of its core. Completely destroy all these scrap metal! Zayaya vigorously shouted. His voice had just fallen when a cold light pierced through the air, and Zayaya's palm suddenly covered a metacooler's head. His arm exerted force and directly twisted metacooler's head by 180 degrees, and with a loud sound, an energy bomb hit the top of the emerald-colored machine's carapace, the extreme heat instantly melted a deep hole in the machine's carapace, exposing the half-mechanic structure inside. The nerve-like wires were flashing with electricity. Although the metacoolers were very powerful, they were no match for Zayaya and Seo. Both sides were totally not at the same level. The fight was rapid, and Zayaya was directly disintegrating the metacoolers, killing each in a second. After a while, broken arms, heads, tails, and other parts of the body could be seen fluttering in the sky. Upon seeing this, Zanja and Myling narrowed their eyes, and as they were not willing to be outdone, they revealed their battle power and soon joined the battle. At this moment, sensing the energy pervading planet Hongshan, the Scions who were watching the battle on the side revealed lifeless expressions on their faces. They knew that Super Scions were very strong, but they had never really experienced their power. At this time, the battle prowess of Zayaya and Co. scared them. Although the Metacoolers looked extremely fragile, they didn't naively think that the enemy was really weak. The reason why they looked fragile was because their side was too powerful. Our leader is so powerful. Their metal bodies are like clay chickens in our leader's hands. Ha ha ha, good, good. Some scions shouted excitedly. The blurry figures flashed everywhere on planet Hongshan, stirring wind, clouds, and producing deep and muffled sounds. Every time they collided, space seemed to explode with dazzling flashes. When Zayaya and others attacked, the scions everywhere also retreated to safe places according to instructions. The number of metacoolers was decreasing. At this time, the metacoolers seemed to have received instructions from the core body, and a large number of them acted at the same time and swiftly gathered from different directions towards Zayaya and others. Suddenly, the sky and the land was filled with the silhouettes of the metacoolers, looking like a vast green area. The numerous metacoolers that were spread out everywhere in the sky caused a strong visual effect. Perhaps the number of metacoolers that invaded planet Hongshan is no less than 1,000. In the end, how many metacoolers did Big Get Star create? Zayaya's calm face could not cover the surprise in his heart. These metacoolers couldn't cause any trouble for them, as they were on planet Hongshan, however, except for planet Hongshan, there was no planet in the galaxy that could withstand the metacoolers' attack. Big Get Star's ambitions were quite clear. They want to rule the entire galaxy. AOOL. Waves of roars swept out. The metacoolers seemed to have been angered. Under the instructions of the central chip, the metacooler core launched a full-scale attack. For a time, rays of light flickered in the sky, and the tyrannical aura was like 10,000 stampeding horses. Every aura was powerful enough to obliterate the existence of a planet. Zayaya looked at them in disdain and together with Myling and Zanja, attacked at the same time. They jumped and immediately turned into golden and white rays of light, throwing themselves into the vast and mighty army. Few indistinct figures traveled back and forth amidst the Metacoolers' orderly formation, as deep and muffled sounds like two fists beating on a war drum sounded, and also, ferocious beast-like roars were mixed with the rumbling. Bang! 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 Do! 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 Numerous green and shiny metallic bodies shook and fell like a kite whose string had been cut. Under their full-strength attacks and with just a punch and a kick, the three agile people seemed to have become a heavy roller machine, as whatever dared to block their path would get grinned and broken. The metacoolers were beaten until they didn't have any power to fight back. The thousand metacooler army was quickly broken apart. 
After the metal bodies were destroyed, broken limbs like a light drizzle fell from the sky, and soon, a green metal garbage dump formed below. Chapter 319, Powerless East Kai The Metasibomans' invasion of planet Hongshan quickly came to a halt with Xiaoya, Miling and Zanja's overwhelming eradication, but this did not signify the end as the big Get Star's actions had already angered Xiaoya. Now, there was going to be a more violent counterattack. As the battle came to an end, the horrifying energy also subsided. At this time, the guardian mechanism inside the nucleus of the planet began to exhibit its effect. In a few seconds, the land and rivers everywhere glowed like a beautiful aurora, emitting bright colors, and the golden energy inside the planet's nucleus crazily operated like a water pump and delivered a great amount of life energy. The mountains and rivers on the surface of the planet which were damaged got restored. The young and tender seedlings crazily grew as if they had been sprayed with a plant growth hormone, causing a large forest to emerge. Sir Zayaya, what should we do with all the wreckage? Duokila, the leader of Fadea people, pointed at the wreckage of the shining green Metasibaman. The wreckage was pressed together like an emerald-colored small mountain, and from time to time, there were flashes of electric current. Zayaya stared at the small mountain for a while as he slightly pondered before instructing Duokila, study them to see if you can extract some useful things and try to make the best use of them. Yes. Hearing what he said, Duokila was so happy that he could hardly suppress his joy. He stared at the wreckage of Metasibaman with shining eyes as if looking at his lover. Biological research was also the strong suit of the Fadea people, otherwise, it would have been impossible to create such a powerful bio-warrior like Zanja in ancient times. Although the Fadea people's civilization was somewhat lost, it was not impossible to research new bio-warriors with the help of the wreckage. At this time, East Area, Planet Bakuf. Planet Bakuf was a blue planet in a red-colored galaxy, and as a relatively peaceful area in the southeastern parts of the East Area, Planet Bakuf was a trading center where goods and services could be traded for the civilizations in the several nearby starfields. The trades dealt on Planet Bakuf included space transportation, tourism, entertainment, etc. It was a well-developed planet. In a manner, which had mountains on one side and a lake on the other, the guardian of Planet Bakuf, Riga, was leisurely standing on the balcony, while drinking alcohol and overlooking the passerby crowd below, his life was carefree and comfortable. It was a gentle and warm afternoon. Suddenly, an alarm resounded. The serenity of Planet Bakuf was broken by a sudden unforeseen development, and then, it quickly fell into a panic. What the hell is going on? Is someone invading Planet Bakuf? Rega's expression slightly changed. Asterisk is a trading planet, the alarm on planet Bakuf will not sound for unimportant reasons, so once the alarm rings, it clearly signifies a major issue. Thinking of this, Rega did not hesitate for another second, he directly jumped down from the balcony and flew towards the office of the leader of the planet. At this time, the leader of the planet was also anxious. When he saw Rega coming, he hurriedly went forward and said, I just got a report stating that thousands of objects with very strong energy reactions have appeared outside Bakuf Galaxy. These people must have come with bad intentions. Planet Bakuf's situation is not looking good. What is the specific energy level? Rega asked with a grave expression. It's unfathomable, the planet level energy detectors have all burnt down, the leader of the planet said as he wiped the cold sweat on his forehead. Rega's countenance abruptly changed and he muttered, This is bad. The planet-level energy detector was enough to detect energy below 10 million. If even the planet-level detectors had burnt down, Rega knew that Planet Bakuf was in trouble. Rega had experienced how formidable Slug was on Planet Bahert, so he knew that there were indeed frighteningly powerful life forms in the universe. However, it was beyond his imagination that such powerful life forms would enter Planet Bakuf. Outside the galaxy, there were not many glowing objects except the red star at the center of the dark sky. At this time, an oblate spherical spaceship entered the gravitational range of the Bakuf galaxy. Its hatch opened, and over a thousand metallic objects emitting fluorescent light rushed out like locusts. The Metasibaman appeared with glowing red pupils, and under the fully activated state, they flashed with dark red rays of light that could make one's scalp numb in such a way that the danger would be felt even from far away. As all the Metasibaman were dispatched, they quickly spread out to others parts of the galaxy. It wasn't long before various large and small gaseous and rocky planets in the galaxy exploded into gorgeous flashes like fireworks. Hwalala. The planet-level energy storm swept through the vast starfield, wiping it out. Planet Bakuf suffered the greatest disaster in its history. Planet Hongshan. After Duokila left, 
Adri and Bardock came over. This time, Big Get Star's invasion of planet Hongshan had made them very angry. We Scions haven't taken action for many years, so there are already a lot of planets that have forgotten our cruel side. This time, we need to counterattack. Adri's dark face was full of anger, his eyes exuding a horrifying light like that of a ferocious beast from the wilderness. Yet, yeah, Big Get Star aren't wrong because they are ambitious. They are wrong because they lack judgment and ended up attacking us. Zayaya watched Adri and Bardock's reaction and nodded, saying, I will let Big Get Star pay the price. But before that, let all the Scions outside come back and increase their strength for a while. Obviously, the Big Get Star had set its sight on the Scions, so the most effective way to solve this problem was to completely contain the source before the problem occurs. When the Big Get Star demanded the blood of Scions from him, Zayaya was clever to send an expert to tail their spaceship, but Big Get Star's people were also crafty and got rid of the tail. Okay, I will have the Scions outside return now. In any case, the Galactic Patrol organization has collapsed, so it's fine even if some missions are not completed. Any information on who destroyed the Galactic Patrol organization? Zayaya inquired. It's still under investigation, but according to the extent of destruction of the Central Galaxy, I'm afraid that the one who attacked them is not weak. Bardock frowned while thinking in his heart, asterisk is there any connection between the people who destroyed the Galactic Patrol organization and Big Get Star that invaded planet Hongshan? Put this matter aside for the time being. First, we will deal with Big Get Star using our full strength. After all, they were able to take out 1000 metacoolers at the same time, so they should have a lot of them stockpiled in their hands. Zayaya was very worried. If the Metasibomin were of the mass production type, then as long as there was enough energy, it could be continuously manufactured. At that time, if their large numbers swarm in like locusts, then no one in the entire galaxy would be their opponent. Sir Zayaya, a piece of news has come from Planet Bakuf. Planet Bakuf was invaded, and it has already been destroyed. A Scion came forward and reported. Look, it's Big Get Star's style. Planet Bakuf has a lot of our planet auctions industries. I think this is still not finished. Maybe there will be more planets which will get attacked. East Kai's planet. At the moment, East Kai was so angry that she was trembling. There was a saying that, when it rains, it pours. After Bojack broke out of the seal, the East area under her jurisdiction was also attacked by the Metasibomin. Damn big get star, how dare they. These Metasibomin must have been made with the genes of frost demons. They look exactly like cooler. Regarding the situation that had emerged in East Area, East Kai was a bit sad and also somewhat powerless. One cooler had already made her feel powerless, and this time, more than one metacooler had appeared in the mortal world, also, these metacoolers were a lot stronger than Cooler himself. They were in such large numbers that they gathered together like a beehive, so how would the experts in the mortal world be a match for them? It seemed as if the balanced order of the world had been broken. Unfortunately, after the disappearance of the Galactic Patrol organization, the galaxy has no regular army. As a result, things are repeatedly getting worse. I have already contacted the Great Grand Kai, and he said that he would arrange some experts from heaven to enter the world of the living. However, I wonder when they will arrive. East Kai inwardly prayed that Grand Kai could send more experts. Before reaching the reincarnation age, the warriors of heaven would train on Grand Kai's planet. As long as a psychic from the mortal world links a passage between the world of the living and the world of the dead, they can descend to the mortal world for one day. To be honest, East Kai was actually somewhat doubtful whether the experts from heaven could deal with Bojack and the Metasibomin or not. The Dragon Ball world had an interesting phenomenon. Most of the experts who had reached the destruction level were not natural warriors, meaning that they more or less had artificially manufactured components. Metacooler, androids, galaxy soldiers, and even Majin Buu, Jane Emba, Hiridgurn and so on, were not pure natural life forms. The heavenly warriors were all mortals before they died, so even if they had been training in heaven for many years, no one knew what level of strength they could really achieve. East Kai felt powerless at this time, and could only try. Chapter 320, Attacking Big Get Star Grand Kai's planet was located in a higher dimension of the galaxy. It was connected to heaven of underworld. It was an enormous planet on which the galaxy's heroes, who had made great contributions over the many years, were living on it. At this time, in Grand Kai's palace, seven people in a row were kneeling on one knee in front of Grand Kai. Picken, Atlee, and Barnes. 
I have gathered you here together because of a huge crisis in the world of the living. Bojack has broken through the seal and returned. So, I need you seven to go to the mortal world and save the world of the living. Grand Kai was wearing a tall Kai's hat as he explained the situation with a solemn expression. The great Grand Kai, is that Bojack the same guy who created chaos in the galaxy 200,000 years ago? Pickin raised his head and asked. Yes, it was him along with several of his companions. They are now in a starfield of the East Area, Grand Kai swept his eyes over everyone and answered with certainty. Hearing his words, Pickin and the others' heart sank. Although they had personally experienced the strength of Bojack and his companions, it could be said that Bojack's reputation, even after 200,000 years, was still very resounding. They had seriously coomed through the strong experts who had appeared in history during their time in heaven, and amongst them naturally included Bojack and his companions. When they heard that their opponent this time was Bojack, Pickin, and the others could feel pressure in their heart. To be honest, even though they had trained in heaven for so many years, they didn't have enough confidence to deal with Bojack and his companions who shook the galaxy 200,000 years ago and turned it upside down. After a person in the living world died, their soul could enter underworld, and once the soul in underworld dies, it could not be saved at all. However, now, the world of the living had suffered a great catastrophe, so they couldn't sit back and ignore them. This war is very dangerous, so you have to be careful. I have contacted East Kai in the mortal world and told her to arrange a psychic to open the passage between the world of the living and world of the dead. Remember, you only have one day. Yes, Great Grand Kai. We will definitely complete the mission, Pickin and the other experts of Underworld said in unison with a not afraid of death expression. They were some of the few experts in heaven, and they made great contributions during their lifetime to retain their physical body after death. They had a pure sense of justice in their hearts. But one thing was clear, they were not of an abnormal race like that of the frost demons before their death, so their strength was gradually built up over the years. Go. Grand Kai worriedly waved his hand, letting a staff of heaven lead them out. The seven people, including Pickin, got up and left. The staff walked together with them along a cyan-colored path, which was very long and had no end in sight. There were springs emitting bubbles on both sides. These springs were filled with churning golden liquid, and as the bubbles in the golden liquid popped, the resounding cries of a little child could be heard. At the end of the cyan-colored path, East Kai was waiting, she had been waiting there for a long time. Pickin, hurry up a little. The psychic in the world of the living is about to open the passage between the world of living and world of death, so I will send you to the east area now. Pickin politely said, We have troubled you, East Kai. Before his death, he was one of the few experts in the administrative region of West Kai and had met East Kai several times when training on Grand Kai's planet. East Kai nodded and hurriedly contacted the east area's psychic. Soon, she saw several colorful bubbles flash, and Heaven's warriors were transferred to east area's starfield. Atley, Barnes, I will now give you Bojack and his companion's position. I will let some professionals use instant transmission to bring you over. East Kai knew that Pickin and the others could only stay in the world of living for one day, so they had to make it brief, as a result, she had arranged for people who could use instant transmission to take them there directly in order to shorten the time for the journey. At this time, East Kai turned to Pickin and once again explained the situation of Big Get Star. Pickin, I need you to go directly to the headquarters of Big Get Star and destroy them together with their metacoolers. Because the situation was very urgent and Big Get Star had a large number of metacybomen, East Kai directly arranged the most powerful warrior amongst the batch, Pickin, to go. Pickin calmly nodded. He already understood the general situation. Naturally, he did not have any intention to shirk the responsibility. He could not help but sigh as he said, I didn't expect that besides Bojack, the galaxy also has these mad guys. Please rest assured, the great East Kai and leave Big Get Star to me. UMM. East Kai finally breathed a sigh of relief, and immediately began to look for the location of Bojack and his companions, preparing servants to send Pickin and others. Hey, it turns out that Bojack and his companions are near Big Get Star, so it will save us a lot of trouble, East Kai was a little surprised as she said. On the other side, the place where Big Get Star was located. The distant and deep outer space was covered by a nebula, and the whole starfield was partly hidden and partly visible. Gorgeous lights flashed in the outer space, and two sparkling figures appeared outside the nebula. So, this is where Big Get Star has hidden. My god, there are countless auras from their metacoolers inside the nebula. Myling, with her blonde hair fluttering, 
pointed at the blurry nebula in front and couldn't help but exclaim. At the edge of the nebula, it could be faintly seen that a brightly lit spaceship was busy transporting something. Let me count, there are over 10,000 metacoolers. Big Get Star's technology is really developed. Earlier, after the Metasibomin attacked planet Hongshan, Xiaoya listed Big Get Star in his must eradicate list. So, he finished the work in his hand, and together with Miling, he followed the Metasibomin's auras and went into the outer space. Zayaya could naturally also sense the number of Metasibomin and couldn't help but suck in a cold breath as a result. Although the Metasibomin's strength was not worth mentioning in his eyes, a lot of ants could also bite an elephant to death, so if he let Big Get Star manufacture them on such a large scale, there will be a real possibility of flooding with locusts. Fortunately, we've arrived in time. If we had let them develop for a while more, this trouble would have become even bigger. Asterisk existences such as Big Get Star must be destroyed and even these metacoolers must be eradicated. Zayaya and Myling glanced at each other, and they understood what the other was thinking. Then, a cold ray flashed in their pupils, and both of them nodded at each other and rushed forward, launching powerful attacks from both directions. In an instant, as the gorgeous energy waves concentrated together, the deep, vast and dark starry skies were completely filled with magnificent energies. Suddenly, a thunderous noise resounded, and the bright and beautiful light rays and rumbling sounds were immediately followed by ripples. The fierce astral winds wreaked havoc on the stardust along the way. The plain but enchanting nebula was immediately struck, and as if it were a layer of ice, a big hole appeared. The substance was too late to fill it and ended up forming a void as a result, as an endless and powerful burning shock waves directly entered into the nebula, heading towards Big Get Star. The blurry nebula immediately seethed like boiling water. Hula! Hula! The debris in the starry sky expanded, melted, and then evaporated. Wang! 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 Inside the nebula, the Big Get Star issued a non-stop series of urgent alarms. When it was detected that a tremendous amount of energy exceeding the upper limit had penetrated through the outer protective shell of the nebula, the high-level members inside the Big Get Star instantly sunk into a panic. Mond, what the hell is going on? Sir Manuel, there are several unidentified powerful energies rushing towards us, and the outer protective net is being broken. Not good, the protective shell cannot stop it. Mon's half-mechanical pupils flashed before they abruptly shrank, his countenance turning panicked. Manuel said in anger and panic, can the planet's outer shell resist the attacks? Mon hurriedly took a group of scientists with him to calculate and got a conclusion that was not too bad and said, our big get star is made of a special alloy that is extremely resistant to attacks, but the energy rushing over is too strong. I just want to know if it can stop them or not. Mon swallowed saliva and said, Big Get Star's defenses have basically been broken, but it won't collapse. If we hide in the core area of the planet, there is a big chance of surviving. Chapter 321, Underworld's Experts Manuel flew into a rage and smashed his fist on a tempered plate, causing the plate to sink in. Important personnel immediately evacuate and raise Big Get Star's defense to the highest level. Furthermore, Fully activate all the Metasibomin. Manuel ordered. Yes. Activate the highest defense, the defense is activating. The top level personnel of Big Get Star conversed via computers in their cerebral cortex. The seemingly cumbersome communication actually took less than a millisecond. Shortly afterward, Big Get Star's defense mechanism fully activated, and the solid defense began to compete with the chaotic and disorderly energy storm. However, Zayaya's attack was very strong and soon after, the protective net was torn apart. Boom! Boom! A series of shock waves fell on the surface of the planet, and a loud gong-like sound reverberated everywhere in the Big Get Star. Emerald white metal dust, following the waves of blasts, splashed out, and the planet suddenly fell into disorder. When the waves of energy subsided, the ball-like Big Get Star was like a squashed ball, one side of the ball was still spherical, but the other side had sunken by three-quarters area. It sunk by tens of thousands of kilometers, and bright red metallic lava was flowing along the terrain in the middle. Quick look, what is that? As Zayaya and Myling teleport to the surface of Big Get Star, Manuel who had already retreated into the center of the planet saw two blonde figures appearing in the sky from the screen. He immediately understood that they were the people behind the attack just now. What are you waiting for? Dispatch all the Metasibomin immediately. Manuel roared. Yes. The staff members hurriedly operated the computers. Then, 
Ziaya and Myling saw numerous packed containers suddenly rise from below the ground, and the door of the containers suddenly opened, as countless glittering green figures awakened and walked out of them. This scene resembled countless worker bees climbing out of a beehive, with each green dot representing a metasibaman. Their numbers were countless times more than they were at planet Hongshan. My meta-warriors, completely annihilate these intruders. In the control room, Manuel was filled with anger as he looked at the blonde duo floating in midair and immediately passed down the kill command to the brain of all the metasibaman. Kill. 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 A bloodthirsty and murderous intent suddenly pervaded the surroundings, and the scarlet eyes of the numerous metasibaman lit up as they stared at Ziaya and Myling. Then, as if they had discovered their prey, they all screamed and swarmed towards Ziaya and Myling. In the blink of an eye, the dense crowd of figures occupied Xiaia and Myling's entire field of vision. As they raised their head and looked towards them, Xiaia and Myling could see a boundless green scenery. Ziaia grinned and twisted his neck, the bones making snapping sounds. Myling, we'll compete on who destroys more metacoolers. All right. Responding heartily, Myling glanced at the metal life forms, turned around and smiled. Then, she forcefully swung her arms and her slender body immediately erupted with astonishing energy. Myling's blonde hair fluttered, and the blurred figure split into two. Then, like a giant roller charging over, all the metal life forms that she hit were crushed by the strong impact. Boom! Due to Myling's attack, various emerald green limbs scattered like raindrops and littered everywhere. Myling glanced excitedly at the results of her attack as a ray of light flashed in her green eyes. She gave a loud shout, and her body rushed to the sky blazing and flowing with energy. Her energy surged, raising a whirlwind. Afterward, she randomly grabbed a metasibaman's broken limb and rapidly moved about like a golden hazy whirlwind. Suddenly, the ear-piercing sounds of metal scraping a pane of glass could be heard. The metasibaman that were barring her path entered the range of the golden energy attack and ended up without any remains like they were thrown into a deep fryer. Myling. This brat used all of her power at once. Ziaya looked at her with a stiff expression. His smirk was gone as he mused, this girl has taken the lead. If it continues like this, wouldn't I lose the competition? Ziaya had to get back the dominating position. Ziaya smacked his lips and snapped his fingers continuously in the air. Suddenly, a series of winding cracks like tiny earthworms appeared in the space, and then, the crack grew larger and soon became like a zigzagging snake. In the blood-red background, these appeared even more frightening as they flicked out their tongues. The blood-red snake would occasionally come and go, their huge maws opened wide and immediately swallowed the several metal life forms. In the face of the power of space-time cracks, the strength of the metasibaman seemed meager. Big Get Star's offense and defenses completely lost their balance, becoming hard-pressed. Seeing this, Myling turned around and merrily laughed towards Ziaya. At this time, Big Get Star seemed to have become a playground for this husband and wife pair. Inside the core of the planet, Manuel looked stunned as he lifelessly pointed at the scenes on the screen. This, what the hell is going on? Manuel was so angry that he was trembling. These are my strongest Cybomen, how come they are so useless? He felt as if he was sitting on a roller coaster ride. From the beginning, he was so worked up and angry that he suddenly felt an icy and chilling feeling in his bones. He was left speechless. How could the peerless Meta Cybomen they were so proud of now turn out so weak? The perfect warriors in Manuel's heart instantly turned into clay chicken and pottery dogs, which was a huge blow to his heart. Sir, these two warriors seem to be the leaders of planet Hongshan, Mond recognized Ziaya and said. He swallowed but found that his throat was dry. Manuel's eyes were dark, he was close to vomiting blood. Outside the Big Get Star, Pickin entered the nebula where Big Get Star was situated through the guidance of an expert, but the scene he saw made him surprised. What the hell happened here? The powerful energy permeating the entire nebula formed a huge cyclone under the constraints of the rules of the universe. The central position seemed to be the eye of the huge typhoon, attracting the energy from the area around the entire planet to revolve around it. Even though he had not witnessed the main cause of this phenomenon, Pickin felt a surging excitement, this was an emotion that he had not felt for many years. What a powerful energy! Who would have thought that there would be such experts in the mortal world? Pickin narrowed his eyes and looked at Big Get Star in surprise, it looked like it had been battered by seawater, resembling a stone fortress on a beach. It was a vast and dense fog like golden light, and the illusory feeling between real and unreal was like a cloud, captivating people's soul yet containing mysterious unknowns and yearnings at the same time. Thump! 
suddenly, the sound of a glass shattering could be heard. The entire nebula began to shake, and under the powerful air currents, the dense fog outside the nebula dispersed, revealing the half-fragmented Big Get star inside. At this time, the two golden lights were continuously attacking. Every time they intersect, a part of the emerald green planet would sink in. Crackle. The metasibomen of Big Get Star were completely destroyed, and next would be the main culprit's Big Get Star. Pickens' green skin slightly trembled, and his pair of wine-colored pupils shimmered with a strange brilliance. He seemed to be somewhat excited. If he could have a round with such a warrior without holding anything back, then, he would be too lucky. Of course, Pickin knew that the current him couldn't do as he pleased since he could only stay for a day in the world of the living, and it was also important to complete the mission that Grand Kai had given him. Pickin stopped pondering and ordered the people who brought him here to leave, and then, he flew ahead and arrived in front of Zayaya and Myling. Are you two also warriors that the Great East Kai invited to destroy the Big Get Star? Pickin inquired. Hmm? Have you come from the underworld? Zayaya paid attention to Pickin specifically the halo on his head which indicated that the person was from the underworld. More importantly, Zayaya sensed that the aura of this person who had come from the underworld was not much weaker than Myling in Super Scion state. It's another person at Cell Perfect Forms level, Zayaya mused. Actually, even a Supreme Kais level was not more than this, or it was even somewhat worse. Not many people of this level were seen in the underworld. They were absolutely as rare as phoenix feathers and unicorn horns. Zayaya and Myling both stopped what they were doing and sized up the uninvited guest before them. I'm Pickin, I was invited by the Great Kai to come and destroy Big Get Star, but it seems that you both have already taken action before I did. Thus, I have a lot of time left, Pickin introduced himself and said with a smile. Chapter 322, East Kai's Request So, he is Pickin. Zayaya looked at the person in front of him and immediately felt somewhat relieved. This Pickin looks a little like a Namekian, but the difference is that he doesn't have two antennas like the Namekians do, Zayaya mused. In Zayaya's understanding, Pickin was very strong. He was originally the strongest warrior under West Kai, and because of his contributions before his death, he kept his physical body after death and continued to train in the underworld. He was also a very righteous person. The life forms in the universe were generally quite weak, so life forms with battle power above 10,000 were rare. In the heavens, heroes like Pickin retained their physical body to train even after death, but to reach the level of cell perfect form was not easy, thus, among the very few underworld experts, Pickin was extremely outstanding. So, after hearing that he was Pickin, Zayaya didn't find it strange. It must be known that even the Supreme Kai, who manages the entire universe, or Dabura, the king of the demon realm, were also roughly at this level. Especially Dabura whose strength was neither too strong nor weak, he had faced difficulty in surviving the harsh and brutal environment of the demon realm which was full of dangers. Pickin could reach the same level as Dabura, which was unique in Underworld. My name is Zayaya, and this is my wife, Myling. We were not invited by the Kai to deal with Big Get Star. Furthermore, we only attacked Big Get Star because they provoked us, also, since you were invited by the Kai, then you can handle the rest, Zayaya said politely. Of course. To return politeness with politeness, Pickin also spoke in a polite tone. As experts of the same level, naturally, there had to be a corresponding treatment, besides, Pickin knew that he wasn't a match for Zayaya, so it was not wrong to be a little polite. Zayaya smiled and said nothing. He was preparing to leave with Myling when East Kai's voice suddenly sounded beside his ear. Wait a moment. I am the Kai of East Area, and you are Scion of Planet Hongshan, right? I want you to do something. East Kai sounded anxious. However, her tone seemed to be proud and arrogant, and Zayaya couldn't help but frown at her arrogant and bossy tone. It must be said that among the four Kais of the galaxy, Zayaya was most familiar with North Kai, and compared with North Kai, this East Kai gave him a bad mood. Forget about North Kai, even compared with Pickin before him who he just met for the first time, East Kai's personality was really a big letdown. If people respect me, I will respect them in kind, Zayaya had always been open to persuasion, but not to coercion. He may listen to them if they speak nicely, but he didn't feel good at East Kai's attitude, so his tone was naturally not polite. Zayaya coldly said, East Kai, you have to know that whenever we the scion of planet Hongshan come out for a mission, we ask for remuneration in return, so, if there is no equal remuneration, then please keep your mouth shut. 
you. East Kai's tone was fierce as no one had ever dared to speak to her like that. She couldn't help but be dumbfounded. But when she recalled Zaya's strength and that she still needed his help, she decided to collect herself and bear it, she said, Your Excellency, the entire galaxy is about to face a huge disaster. Right now, the galaxy's living beings need your strength. What danger is the galaxy facing? Zaya inquired. The galactic soldier, Bojack, from 200,000 years ago has already broken out from his seal. This evil soldier had once caused huge damages to the entire galaxy. Now, the situation has deteriorated even more. Further, it was precisely Bojack and his companions who destroyed the Galactic Patrol organization some time ago, East Kai replied. The news from East Kai made Zaya somewhat fearful. He originally thought that Big Get Star had sent someone to destroy the Galactic Patrol organization. So, it wasn't Big Get Star. Furthermore, Bojack breaking free from the seal is really a disaster for the galaxy. No wonder East Kai would even invite Pickin and others. It seems that this is not just about simply dealing with Big Get Star, the real target is Bojack. But what does this have to do with Zaya? East Kai, I think you have made a mistake. What does Bojack breaking free from his seal have to do with me? It's not as if I let him out. As long as Bojack doesn't provoke me, I won't intervene, Zaya said. Although the Scions were a fighting race, it was impossible to generously go to their doom for the so-called righteousness. After all, the current strength of the Scion race was not worth mentioning in front of the real high-level gods, it was only Zaya, Xiling and other few Scions that were really powerful. Zaya himself didn't care about Bojack. Ordinary Scions couldn't intervene because of their inadequate strength, so they wouldn't be able to enjoy the fun of fighting, while Zaya himself was not willing to intervene, therefore, why should he agree to East Kai's request? Hey! Zaya's attitude made East Kai extremely angry. She felt that Zaya was completely being lax. These scions are really stupid, she cursed. East Kai quelled her anger and said, As far as I know, there is a companion of Bojack hiding on planet Hongshan the one called Zanja, also, what about the Fadea people, aren't Bojack and his companions the evil that they created? Ultimately, it's related to you scions. East Kai, are you berating me? Zaya raised his eyebrows and his countenance turned cold. East Kai was shocked and she immediately lowered her attitude and replied, You misunderstand, it was not my intention to blame you, it's just, for the numerous living beings of the galaxy, I am begging you to help. Although this scion's attitude is repulsive, the time that Pickin and the others have in the world of the living is, after all, only one day. Thus, to completely wipe out Bojack, the help of this scion's strength will be needed. At this time, East Kai still had an air of superiority around her, exhibiting arrogance. This was completely different from North Kai, the short guy. Zaya muttered to himself for a moment. He felt that it won't be good to fall out with a Kai, so he said, let me take action then, but Zanja will not be included in it. Okay. I'll leave the mop up of the big get star to you, Pickin. So, East Kai, tell us where Bojack is. Zaya thought about it for a moment and agreed. After all, Bojack's existence was indeed a hidden danger. He also didn't want Bojack to wreak havoc in the galaxy. If some things had to be done, then they must be done, Zaya won't allow Bojack to wreak havoc just because it was irrelevant to his interests. Although the origins of Bojack and his companions were related to the Fadea people, they could no longer control Bojack and his companions. If one day they provoke me, it will already be too late. Zaya mused. What's more? The way in which an evil guy like Bojack behaved was in conflict with the principles that Zaya adhered to. That's great. After reaching an agreement with Zaya, East Kai became delighted and said, Bojack and his accomplices are now in a starfield not far from Big Get Star. Moreover, several warriors from Underworld are surrounding and suppressing them. Then East Kai informed Zaya about the location of Bojack. Zaya and Pickin nodded, and then together with Myling, Zaya teleported away. A few hundred light years away, a galaxy formed around a red dwarf star. More than a dozen planets of varying colors orbited around the red dwarf star at the center. At this time, on the fourth planet among them, six people from Underworld, such as Atli and Barnes, were confronting Bojack and his three companions. Among these several people, Bojack was the most powerful, with strength equivalent to cell perfect form, and the remaining few were a little bit weaker and had a clear disparity with Bojack. 
Although there was a certain disparity in strength, Atli and the others from the underworld dominated in terms of numbers and with guidance gotten from the Grand Kai, as a result, both sides were in a deadlock for a while, with no one able to deal with the other. Boom! Bojack attacks were as light as a feather amidst the battle. Fireballs rose from the ground towards the sky, and in an instant, dense smoke rose to the height of 10,000 meters, causing a dazzling brilliance to spread out like a huge searchlight shining on the planet. Immediately, the two sides of the planet lost the dividing line between light and darkness, and the dense light rays brightly illuminated every corner of the planet. Bang! 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 The planet was shaking, with black smoke rising everywhere. This beautiful planet suffered from the disaster, and as if they were aware that doomsday was arriving, in the mountains, different types of animals were fleeing for their lives. With a rumbling explosion, boiling heat descended from the sky, instantly turning everything into ashes. The sparse air seemed to have dispersed a lot by the attacks, and the air pressure suddenly dropped. The battle between the underworld warriors and Bojack lasted for a long time. After lacking the main force, Picken, Underworld's overall strength was not as good as Bojack and his companions. Shortly after the battle continued, Atli, Barnes, and others were not even able to stand, already exhausted. Whereas, on the galaxy soldiers' side, except for Bujan and Bido who looked slightly tired, Bojack and the swordsman Kagu were still full of energy. Under the black headscarf, a sneer hung on Bojack's bluish face, and his pair of eyes were like a demon staring at weak lambs, exuding a deep chill. Bojack's body was still mighty and powerful. Besides his dark blue jacket being stained with a little dust, it was not damaged at all. Chapter 323, Terrifying Bojack and His Companions Is that it? Humph! That wasn't even enough for a warm-up. Bojack disdainfully looked at Atli, Barnes and the others, who were already tired, and shook his head, as he thought, they are really too weak. At this time, he noticed the halo above the heads of the underworld warriors. He stared blankly before he suddenly laughed and said, he he he, interesting, interesting. Who would have thought that even people from Underworld would show up? I wonder what would happen if they were killed again. Bojack laughed happily. He had a sudden urge to carry it out. As he had just broken out of the darkness that sealed him for so many years, his mental state was a bit unstable compared to normal people. However, after a period of recovery, his energy reached its peak. Bujan disdainfully said, does it mean that this galaxy has no expert? They even had to use the power of Underworld. After killing them, let's go find those Kais and settle our debt. I heard that Underworld has something called Fountain of Youth. Would it have any effect on us? Even if there is no effect, it should have other functions. Those Kais must have a lot of treasures back in their place, I'm excited just thinking about it. Damn it. Atli, the purple-skinned demi-human, had a grave expression on his face, his cheeks, which were covered with decorative patterns, were drenched with sparkling and translucent beads of sweat. Soul bodies had no way to replenish energy in the world of the living, so if too much energy was expended, it would reduce the length of time they had to stay in the world of the living. However, there was nothing to could do about that, they had to give their best shot. Barnes, Luke, Ambrose, continue to attack. Atlee shouted, full of fighting spirit. Okay. The rest of the underworld warriors responded. Their tired bodies once again erupted with a brilliance, however, the light they were exuding was a lot stronger now. They had been forced to use their full strength which exceeded what their soul body could bear in the world of the living, but, such a state couldn't last long. Following a tremor, the several underworld warriors crazily erupted with vigorous energy. Bojack's strength was indeed beyond their imagination, and the most powerful person amongst them, Picken, wasn't here. If they continued like this, they would sooner or later get defeated, so they had to stall until Picken arrives. Bojack disdainfully said, being weak and of lower status is a crime. You shouldn't have come from Underworld. Bujan, kill them as quickly as possible. Hee <laughs> hee, understood boss. Bujan and the others standing right next to Bojack laughed. Bujan, Kagu and Bido's energy joined together, and like a strong wall, it barred the path of the Underworld warriors and directly pushed horizontally. The key wall swept them away like a fierce wind sweeping through dead leaves, impossible to resist. A storm then erupted out of the underworld warriors and collided with the key wall, but just like an ice cube that had fallen into an oil pan, the storm turned to thin streams of air amidst ear-piercing sounds and quickly dissipated. Damn! Atli had a terrified expression on his face. 
His purple cheeks were covered with sparkling and translucent beads of sweat, and the key flames wrapped around them dissipated. They had no choice but to use their bodies to contend against the opponent. With a loud sound, the attacks by Atli and others were all dispelled. How can there be such monsters in the world of the living? After a few bouts with Bojack's companions, the underworld warriors failed to get an advantage. They had used their full strength, but their attacks which were always successful in the past did not seem to have any effect at all in front of Bojack and his companions. Change direction. Barnes, Luke, both of you should attack from the other side, Ambrose, Croft, we will continue to attack. Okay. They responded, changed their attack strategy and continued to untiringly fight Bojack. From their slightly trembling bodies, a brilliance once again erupted, but it was much weaker than before. Whether it was Barnes or Luke, their attack speed had slowed down by a considerable amount. They were all very clear that if the battle continued like this, the hope of victory will become nothing but wishful thinking. However, they could only hope that Pickin would arrive early. Pickin was the strongest of amongst them, so only he had a chance of defeating Bojack. Grand Kai's Planet In a flat outdoor plaza, a huge crystal ball was shining, displaying the battle in the mortal world. On the side, a dense crowd of Heaven's heroes surrounded it, watching the battle. When they saw that Atli and the others were no match for Bojack, a sigh immediately broke out in Heaven. Grand Kai frowned and inwardly thought, not good. Who would have thought that this Bojack would be so powerful, even Atli and the rest are not a match for him. Pickin, if you don't quickly rush over there, they will be in danger. Even though there were many people with a physical body on Grand Kai's planet, those who could really be counted as super experts include only Pickin and a few other people. At present, Grand Kai had already sent down the most powerful heroes in heaven, and if even such a lineup could lose, then he was out of options. Who oh? Who oh? Bojack, who had been leisurely watching for a long time, suddenly attacked. He quickly flew over as the scenery quickly flashed by, and when he appeared once again, he had already arrived beside Barnes and Luke. He attacked, resulting in a berserk fist power which shot out from his hands. Oh no! Barnes' face drastically changed, but it was already too late. Kaka! The sounds of bone breaking could be heard, and Barnes' shoulder was completely deformed as an explosive power poured out from one side of his body. The violent and destructive power destroyed half of his body and sent him flying. Barnes. Luke's heart trembled, and the fury in his chest burned fiercely. However, at this time, Bojack had already arrived in front of Luke. Bojack's deep and cold gaze was branded in his eyes. The icy cold and dark aura, full of killing intent, made people shudder. Luke dully stared at him, and he seemed to have lost control over his body. Die. Bojack said with indifference as if time had frozen. Bojack waved his fist at Luke's stomach. The blow pierced straight through his body, causing the muscles of his stomach to protrude out from behind. His body pierced through the air like a kite with its string cut, drawing a beautiful arc midair. Bojack smiled coldly, and once again attacked the others. With a few muffled sounds, Ambrose and others suddenly screamed and flew out, before falling to the ground. The halo above their head flashed a few times and then dimmed before disappearing. Seeing their boss's invincible might as he took care of the enemy in a few seconds, Kagu and the others couldn't help but feel greatly encouraged. Kagu evilly grinned, and his huge sword slid down from the sky, as a poignant light shone with the crescent-shaped afterimages, rushing towards Atli below. Damn it, die! Atli screamed, and his body suddenly erupted out with strong energy. A cyclone rotated around him, as the chaotic airflows suddenly condensed together before they immediately exploded. It seemed to have the upper hand for a while. However, good times do not last long, Kagu's eyes flashed with a gloomy light, as an evil aura rippled out, and his whole body unexpectedly swelled. Blade flash. Purple cyclone. Instantly, the two raging energies radiated calmness and turmoil. Kagu's sword was extremely sharp, as it instantly chopped the space, forming a very thin and smooth tangential line in the dense purple cloud. The astonishing super attack made contact with the purple energy and immediately swelled like a balloon. Licking his lips, Kagu coldly retracted the handle of his sword. Boom! The energy erupted out, and an earth-shattering and frightening sound was transmitted over to the distance. A huge fireball rose in the atmosphere. Its size was enormous as if countless large yield nuclear bombs had detonated. There was not enough time for Atli to escape, as he was unwillingly drowned in the frightening energy. Hehe. <laughs> These underworld warriors are just so-so, Kagu smiled coldly, 
his blue eyes flashing with contempt as he said. The crowd on Grand Kai Star lost their voice. They were all stunned by the power shown by Bojack and his companions. They thought about it by putting themselves in their shoes, what if I were the one facing them? I will die. Everyone simultaneously came to this same conclusion, and they couldn't help but be terrified, this terror then turned to despair as they thought, is there no one in the universe who can stop them? It seemed that this was indeed the case. With the defeat and death of Ambrose, Barnes and the others, their belief in victory also began to wane. Meanwhile, in the world of the living. On the unknown planet, the scenery was blurred for a period of time before it finally became clear again only to see that the chain of mountains was completely flattened into a yellow wasteland. An unpleasant smell drifted along with the slowly rising black smoke. In the middle, a frightening ring-like enormous pit of unknown depth and a diameter of 10,000 meters appeared in the line of sight. 10,000 meters in the sky, two golden figures were floating above the giant ring-shaped pit. Zayaya was carrying the purple-skinned Atli, the purple soul was only faintly discernible, threatening to disappear at any moment. Chapter 324, Myling's Battle It seems that we have uninvited guests. Bojack vaguely felt that someone had intervened in the battle even from far away. His eyes slightly narrowed as he was very angry because someone dared to disturb his fun time. His originally cold and stern expression quickly became gloomy. Well, since someone is so eager to court death, then I will help them with it. Bojack stood upright, as an indifferent sneer hung on the corners of his mouth, looking as if he was sure of victory. However, when he got a clear look at the people who had come, his expression suddenly froze, after a while, a cold and gloomy smile was on his face, and then he gnashed his teeth in anger as he roared out the identity of the people who had come, Super Science. Good, 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 I haven't come looking for you lot yet, but you Super Science have come to my door instead. It's really a pleasant surprise. Bojack laughed out loud and recovered from the earlier surprise. He suddenly felt that his luck was unexpectedly so good. It hadn't been long that he escaped from his seal and he had already found the super science that he had been dreaming about for a long time, this would save him a lot of trouble. Bojack was emitting a cold key, and his devilish grin was like a bloodthirsty demon, frightening to behold. At this time, Zayaya was also attentively looking at Bojack and his companions who were not far away, and the corners of his mouth curled into what looked like a smile yet not a smile. He activated the spirit eye secret skill, and details on Bojack and his companions was projected in his eyes. As expected, Bojack is the strongest among these people, with 4 billion battle power, which is close to Cell Perfect Form's power level, Zayaya mused. The rest of the companions were a little weaker. Among them, Kaga was the most powerful, and the remaining two were only a little bit more powerful than Zanja. Their battle power was between 2.5 billion and 3 billion. Myling, I'll hand over this Bojack to you to play, all of a sudden, Zayaya turned to Myling who was by his side and said. Myling was currently in full power state, and she was not much weaker than Bojack. It was quite rare to meet an opponent like Bojack who was evenly matched to her, so Zayaya hoped that she could make a breakthrough with this opportunity. Of course, he would be watching from the side, so he believed that Myling's life would not be in danger. Leave him to me. Not afraid, Myling stepped forward, brimming with fighting spirit. Actually, after encountering an opponent like Bojack, Myling's blood was boiling. She understood Zayaya's intentions. In fact, she also intended to make a breakthrough with this opportunity. Turning around and deeply looking at Zayaya, Myling's lips split into a smile, and then her body flashed, appearing in front of Bojack. Seeing this, Kagu and the others frowned, they naturally would not let Myling do as she wished, so they stepped forward together, intending to block Myling. This is not a battle you can intervene in. Get lost. A voice suddenly thundered in the ears of Kagu and the others, shaking their scalp until it felt numb. Looking over, they found out that the male Super Scion, who was standing next to the girl, was looking at them with an icy expression in his eyes which, without any reason, caused them to shudder. Zayaya certainly wouldn't look on from the sidelines as the others wrecked Myling's fight. He softly shouted, and struck the void a few times. Suddenly, an extraordinary and inexplicable force suddenly pierced through space and acted on Kagu and the others, and then, as if they were being fiercely struck by a hammer, the three companions were uncontrollably sent flying to the side. This skill was the same as when Zanja was easily captured. What is going on? A bad omen flitted across Kagu and Bujin's hearts and they shouted uneasily. At this time, their bodies seemed to be trapped with a layer of shackles. No matter how they struggled, 
they could not get rid of the shackles. They couldn't help but be overwhelmed with shock as they stared at the scion in the distance with fear evident in their eyes. Just be quiet, Ziaya said indifferently. Then, regardless of whether Senzu beans had any effect on the underworld's living beings, Ziaya took out a Senzu bean and fed it to Atli. Fortunately, because he had a physical body, the Senzu bean was effective on Atli, causing him to quickly recover. Who are you? Atli had already realized something, but it was because of this realization that he asked in astonishment. Ziaya shook his head and said, It doesn't matter who we are, just stand on the side and watch. As he spoke, an aura of someone in authority spread out from him, causing Atli to feel heavy pressure. Atli nodded in a daze and then turned his sight to the battlefield not far away. Does this golden-haired girl really intend to fight with Bojack alone? But, her opponent is Bojack. Atli felt confused. At this time, Bojack felt that these pair of super scions were different from the ones he had encountered before. They seemed to be even more powerful. This feeling was the same when he had encountered the red-haired scion, hence Bojack's sinister face changed continuously, and slowly, fear crept into his heart. At this moment, he somewhat lost his confidence, such that he didn't dare to act recklessly. It doesn't matter why are you both different. You will die today. Hell explosion wave. Bojack roared. Bojack decisively chose to strike first and gain the upper hand. He burst into a loud shout and fiercely stamped his foot on the ground, and like a lightning ray, he rushed over with a large amount of energy spread out at the same time, entangling Miling. He went all out with his first attack. Break. The pretty face of Miling was contorted with anger. She spread out her arms and dispelled the power, which was encircling her, with great effort. Boom. Boom. The sky shook and the earth quaked. The imposing aura was like a rainbow, as the majestic energy instantly turned into a ring of bright fog, it shot out like ocean spray, with peculiar ripples immediately appearing in the silent and suffocative sky. In an instant, it spread out to the far distance. At this time, in the distant East Kai's planet. East Kai had already sensed the frightening battle that was taking place in the mortal world via her planet. It seemed that even her planet could feel the frightening nature of the battle, sending out a burst of violent high-frequency vibrations. East Kai was stunned. She looked at the mortal world with a flustered look and said incredulously, How can these mortals be so powerful? This Bojack, the demon that disrupts the galaxy is one thing, but I didn't expect that even the Super Scion will be so powerful. The situation in the mortal world really made her very worried. It seemed like the fragile planet could collapse at any time. But at the same time, she was also exhilarated as she mused, Hmm. It seems that the female Scion can contend against Bojack. Kaka. Under the heavy pressure, tiny cracks appeared on the surface of the planet, and then, they rapidly expanded. It didn't take long for the small cracks to become a wide chasm, and under the pull of the powerful energy, some small pebbles started floating without the influence of gravity, with dense black clouds gathering together. The black clouds pushed down on a city with a kind of suppression that made it difficult for people to breath. Between the sky and ground, Miling's figure entangled with Bojack as they violently clashed. As the two fought, a cyclone spread out along the surface of impact. They were in touch for only a short time, their speed could no longer be measured by time. They quickly exchanged blows and quickly separated right after. Hell punch! Bojack didn't feel good at being suppressed. How could he, one who considered himself the best in the world, be suppressed so much? He loudly roared in anger, and then his power defense, speed, attack power, and destructive power sharply increased by several times, as the revolting black energy transformed into a vicious hell dragon. He threw out a punch which was like tigers and dragons roaring, very powerful. When Myling saw this, her heart couldn't help but palpitate. Her pupils shrank as she gazed at Bojack, however, she couldn't dodge and could only face the attack head on. Energy blade. Shoo. Suddenly, Light dots converged into a sparkling and shiny crescent-shaped blade which was thin like a cicada's wing, no, it was even thinner than a cicada's wing. In that instant, countless splendors flashed through the smooth air and entangled with Bojack's hell dragon. Hwalala. A golden ball suddenly expanded, and at this time, Myling's eyes lit up and she rushed up. Bang. 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 As they clashed, intense collisions and afterimages were everywhere. Bojack was not easy to deal with. He constantly changed his body's shape, so Myling was never able to gain an advantage. Soon, they had fought hundreds of times in quick succession. 
bang. A huge force rushed straight down, and the tiny gravel suddenly accelerated within a thousandth of a second, with tiny cold lights flickering. Zayaya calmly looked at the fight below as a hint of a smile flashed on his face. As long as she can put on more effort, Myling may be able to break through the limit of Super Scion full power, Zayaya was full of expectations as he mused. Perhaps, because of her fusion, Myling's physical strength was greater than the average Super Scion, just like Gotenks, after Goten and Trunks fused together, they had the ability to break through Super Scion 3 at a young age, which was a little bit exaggerated. Although it was not as unreasonable as Gotenks, Myling's physical strength was still strong enough. However, this advantage also brought about a little misfortune which was that the individual Super Scion form of both Xiling and Myers had met with obstructions as if their potential had been sucked away by Myling. Their individual Super Scion form had not made any breakthrough and was still at the ordinary Super Scion stage. This was the bad aspect of the fusion technique. Fortunately, Xiling and Myers had been by Xiaya's side for a long time, and in a sense, both of them were one person. At this time, whether it was Atli, the underworld warrior, or the several galaxy soldiers, they all looked on sluggishly. Their eyes protruded out as if they did not dare to believe the scene in front of them. Chapter 325, Not Enough Pressure How can a super scion be so powerful? Boss is being suppressed by her. The heart of the galaxy soldiers trembled, and then, they glanced at Zayaya who had been paying attention to the battle not far away and their hearts trembled even more. The situation is bad. Moreover, that male super scion is a really powerful person, and so far, he hasn't even directly participated in the battle. Bujin's expression was constantly changing as he seriously pondered in his heart, he felt that the situation was not good for them. However, now that his mobility had been restricted, he could only wait for the arrival of a trial. Not so long ago, weaklings could only crawl in front of them, but in a flash, he himself had gotten into their position. Unlike Bujin's confusion, Atli's eyes became brighter and brighter, he was overjoyed. Wow, this young lady can actually fight Bojack to such an extent. At this time, Atli suddenly heard a gentle voice. It turned out to be Pickin with a halo on his head. He was teleported here with the help of a professional. Mr. Pickin. Atli excitedly stepped forward and greeted Pickin, but shortly after, he remembered the loss of their companions and said sadly, Barnes and Luke, they, they all sacrificed themselves. Pickin's countenance changed and he sighed in sadness, so, I was late. Once a being of the underworld dies, it signifies a real death, and they wouldn't even have the opportunity of reincarnation. Pickens' body swayed a few times, and then he rushed forward, intending to join the battle between Myling and Bojack, however, a sudden force fettered his body in place. Mr. Zayaya, what are you doing? asked Pickin in confusion. This is Myling's battle, so please wait for a short while. Bojack is an evil and unpardonable person, so please release me and let me annihilate Bojack as soon as possible, Pickin said through gritted teeth. Zayaya shook his head and refused, no, this relates to whether my wife can break through her realm or not, so I can't let you go. Oh. Pickin saw that Zayaya was determined and didn't seem to be fooling around, so he had no choice but to retreat. However, his body was tensed and ready to attack whenever necessary. He had stayed in the world of the living for a long time, but he was not in a hurry to go back immediately. So like everyone else, his eyes were focused on Myling and Bojack's battle. In front, the battle had been going on for a while, and Myling's key was consumed by more than half. In order to injure Bojack, she did not hesitate to waste a lot of energy as bait and split into another doppelganger. At this moment, her key was less than 50% of her peak. Myling's key consumption was severe, but Bojack was not much better. Although he was a bio-warrior made by the Fadea people, he was not as good as Dr. Jero's androids. It must be known that androids 17 and 18 were not only powerful enough to never get exhausted, but they could also improve to a certain extent through training, in contrast, although Bojack was born with great power, his endurance and potential was inferior by a margin when compared to the androids. Sometimes he couldn't help but sigh as Earth's black technology was indeed powerful. On the intense battlefield, another bout of battle came to an end. Myling stood on the ground, and her chest was heaving up and down, slightly panting for breath. Her face was covered in sweat as she stared at Bojack not far away. Wiping the sweat, she immediately launched a fierce attack without any regards for her exhaustion. No e east om. I can't go on like this anymore. It seems that I'll have to use a unique skill. Myling attacked while inwardly making a decision. 
she knew that this battle with Bojack was an opportunity that Zayaya had provided for her because she wouldn't be able to encounter such an expert in ordinary times, thus, Myling cherished this opportunity very much and planned to use the immense pressure to force herself to break through her current realm. Although Myling was not able to inflict even a little bit of fatal injuries to Bojack during their battle, it was not without any gain, at least she was able to understand Bojack's capabilities. Bojack was definitely a strong existence, and it was unlikely that Myling would be able to completely annihilate him even with her full power Super Scion Realm, however, it doesn't imply that Bojack was too strong. Bojack's strength originated from the activities of the cells within his body. Every time he sustained injuries, the cells within his body would get agitated and pump out a great deal of powerful energy just like a water pump. However, there is always an upper limit on cell activity for any life form before it reaches the life level. Myling determined that Bojack's level was still under Super Scion 2. After figuring out Bojack's strength, Myling's delicate face finally revealed a smile. She swiftly retreated, and no longer showing any reservations, she roused her key and her strength fully erupted out. This is. Pickin, who was watching the battle from far away, revealed a shocked expression. He did not expect that the woman who was with Zayaya would be so powerful. The world of the living was still hiding such an expert. Pickin was astounded. As he was at the center of the storm bearing the brunt of it, Bojack was undoubtedly the one who felt it the deepest. When he directly faced Myling's eruption, his heart somewhat trembled. How is it possible? Bojack's countenance drastically changed, and then, he gritted his teeth and attacked Myling without hesitation. Bojack knew that he had to prevent Myling from taking the initiative this time, thereby hindering her from controlling the rhythm of the battle. Come on, it's the right time. Myling opened her bright and calm green eyes, which were faintly flashing with a glimmer of light. Instantly, the atmosphere heated up. Cyclones rose, and countless small lights suddenly appeared in their dim line of sight. These lights were arranged neatly like shiny stars in the Milky Way. The bright rays of light were very beautiful, inadvertently making people to deeply immerse themselves in its wonderful illusions. Star Rampage Myling issued a sharp scream as she launched a wide area attack. Suddenly, Countless rays of light brightly shining like small knives as if they possessed life rapidly rotated. Shoo! 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 As the half-inch rays of light streaked through the void, darkness suddenly appeared, and rain-like beams of light fell from the sky. Bastard! Bastard! Bojack cursed as he realized that he had already lost the chance to disrupt Myling. Bojack could only raise a huge energy barrier to defend the attacks, however, Myling's attacks were too concentrated and he didn't know what laws the blades were operating on. The blades had extremely strong penetrating power, so Bojack could only wearily respond by roaring angrily to vent the hatred in his heart. In a short while, the small blades made thin and deep wounds on Bojack's bluish skin, and blood continuously sprayed out. Pfft! Bojack was seriously injured. Myling's eyes shone as she saw the opportunity that presented itself, and then, she teleported and appeared above Bojack, before lifting her leg and stomping down hard. Boom. As Bojack barreled into the ground, a deep hole cracked open on and spread out like the fragmented traces of a spider web. Soon, Bojack was lying leaned on his back in the depths of the pit, spitting out blood. His black headscarf had burned down, and his orange hair was messy, he cut a sorry figure. The pressure on Myling doesn't seem to be enough. Zayaya muttered as he frowned. He discovered something unexpected. Myling had the upper hand in the battle with Bojack and this didn't conform to his original intention. Had he always underestimated Myling's strength? Or, when she was fighting with him in the past, didn't Myling go all out? If Myling were to break through to Super Scion 2, she would need greater pressure. When Gohan battled against Cell Perfect Form, Cell Perfect Form was stronger than full power Super Scion. Under the tremendous pressure, Gohan's potential was stimulated and he finally broke through to Super Scion 2. Zayaya frowned and thought, Myling is a scion with good latent talent, so she should also have such capability. He glanced at Bujin and the rest of the galaxy soldiers who were imprisoned on the side, their bodies twisting uneasily, and waved his hands to lift the space shackle on them. Mr. Zayaya, what are you doing? Pickin turned pale with fright. He naturally guessed Zayaya's intentions as he thought, but is she not his wife? At this time, why isn't he helping her? Instead, he is boosting the enemy's power. On the distant Kai's planet, East Kai gnashed her teeth in anger. Zayaya glanced at Pickin coldly and said, I naturally have my reason to do this, so you should just quietly watch. 
After saying that, Zayaya stared at Myling with a serious expression. The reason why he did this was to put pressure on Myling, but as her husband, Zayaya was also very concerned about Myling's life and safety. Without a hundred percent certainty, he wouldn't joke around with Myling's life. If Myling's life was in danger, he would certainly use his space-time ability to save her. I hope she can endure this pressure, Zayaya mused. Well, come on. Seeing that Bujin, Kagu and Bido had also joined the battle, Myling's eyes shone as she shouted in excitement, her scions wore like jeans imbuing her with fighting spirit. Huel. 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 Golden flames raged, and then, there was a brief moment of silence. Myling's long blonde hair fluttered in the air under the brush of the key waves, and then, she spread her arms wide, her green pupils without any undulations. Everyone go up together and kill the female scion first. After enduring a series of attacks from Myling, Bojack understood the current situation. In front of life, individual heroism was nothing. He directly beckoned his companions to come up and attack Myling from all sides. Okay, boss. Go up together, and kill her. Kagu and the others all understood that the situation was not good for them, so they all nodded and energetically operated their most powerful moves to attack Myling. Seeing this, Myling's delicate body swayed, and then, she stamped her foot hard. A majestic and surging force passed through the bottom of her foot, and the ground suddenly exploded like a flower, then, the immense counter force pushed her body, causing it to rise quickly at the same time. Bang! 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 The rapid sounds of battle could be heard. Suddenly, Bujin was sent flying with a punch, while Kaga was also struck flying. Chapter 326, Myling Transforming into Super Scion 2 At this time, Bojack also rushed over. Myling glanced at him with a mocking expression and ignored him, she intended to first send Beto flying. However, this undisguised contempt caused Bojack to burst into rage. He clenched his fists and kept shaking. Ah! As he roared like a madman, inexhaustible darkness energy suddenly gathered together, forming a small black hole on Bojack's chest. This was a black ball of light. It throbbed energetically like a beating heart, and on top of that, its suction force was very strong as it sucked in pebbles and sand. Suddenly, the black ball of light exploded into a shining radiance. The dark color seemingly caused people to feel as if they were in a polar region, feeling a bone-penetrating cold that would make their soul tremble, and following that was the emergence of vast and mighty energy. This energy increasingly grew in intensity, from virtual to real. In the next moment, as if a giant reservoir's sluice gate had opened, clearly visible ripples spread out with a thunderous sound. The dark and gloomy sphere suddenly expanded, and within a millisecond turned into a frighteningly enormous sphere with a diameter of one kilometer. With an explosion, an extremely dark power having a spectacular form suddenly appeared. Ha! Huh. Myling suddenly felt a shudder in her heart and her countenance slightly changed. Death Nether Wave! Bojack loudly shouted and then pushed hard. The endless dark energy suddenly eroded everything along the way. Stones, soil, air, it eroded everything as long as it were a form of matter, when they came into contact with this dark energy, it was as if sunlight had come into contact with frost, instantly turning into a wisp of smoke. In front of Bojack, a gully appeared that had swallowed everything. Myling's countenance finally changed. She realized the might of this attack and clenched her teeth as she hurriedly mustered the power within her body to defend. However, Bojack's death nether wave was too fast, and in the blink of an eye, it had already reached her. In the distance, Zayaya's eyebrows furrowed as he watched the battle from the side. Just as he was preparing to stop time, Myling suddenly shouted, and with a loud and rumbling sound, golden flames soared into the sky. Whole Sky Star Map Cannon her chilly voice was full of coldness, and she could only hurriedly switch to offense from defense. In an instant, innumerable spiral shock waves flew around like petals in the sky, forming an enormous toroidal. The velocity of the spiral shock waves in the toroidal was very slow, but each and every spiral had a strong penetrating and offensive power. Chi. 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 The frightening and terrifying light rays formed a disk. The whole sky star map cannon strikingly resembled a rotating galaxy. It had countless sparkling bright dots, and the center was where the light rays were concentrated. At this time, this spiral-shaped galaxy was experiencing the frontal impacts of the big black ball. The key waves all around surged, and with a loud sound like a thunderbolt, azure-colored sparkling light dots covered the sky. At this point, 
Miling's body which was completely surrounded by a golden halo was almost within the reach of the spiral-shaped galaxy. She stretched out her arms and used her full strength to maintain the output of the whole Sky Star map cannon. As the two forces continued to collide and erode each other, a violent fire exploded out from time to time, with several completely distorted depressions around them which occurred as a result of the constriction of the forces towards space. As she had responded hastily, Miling's defensive attack wasn't perfect. Under the attack of Bojack whose strength completely did not lose to hers one had come prepared and the other had responded in exhaustion Miling quickly fell to a disadvantage. The Death Nether Wave gradually pushed down her whole Sky Star map cannon, causing the spiral-shaped galaxy to get smaller and smaller, and also, the distance from Miling was also decreasing, vaguely, she already felt her palm burning. Suddenly, Miling became furious. Zayaya created such a good opportunity for me. How can I lose? At this time, Xiling and Meyer's consciousness merged together. They were both prideful girls, and their arrogance did not allow them to lose. Suddenly, the dazzling golden light intensified, and the raging aura violently churned like boiling oil. Miling's blonde hair towered into the sky as if they had become longer, and sparkling silver electric arcs appeared out of thin air. Miling's appearance changed, and her aura also strengthened by a lot. What's going on? Bojack turned pale with fright. He suddenly felt that the pressure on him seemed to have suddenly increased by several times. This woman. What the hell has happened to her? Super Scion 2. Zayaya, who was just about to take action, felt delighted and dispersed the space-time ability that he had gathered. As expected, Miling did not let him down, she broke through to Super Scion 2. The current Miling had become so powerful, no weaker than him. Crackle. Silver electric arcs entwined around Miling as she majestically stood there. Although her small black-lined jacket was somewhat in tatters, it added a bit of valiant and heroic charm to her. Super Scion 2. Miling smacked her lips. She was feeling good about herself, her eyes full of joy. Then, she felt the abundant power within her body and revealed a charming smile as she muttered, My strength has finally caught up with Zayaya. What the hell is happening? All the people watching the battle, except Zayaya, were dumbfounded and hadn't recovered their wits. I don't understand, I don't understand. She was obviously on her last breath. Why did she suddenly become so strong? Even in heaven, there is no such expert. Pickin muttered to himself. If he was still comparable to or even better than Miling previously, then now he could completely give up on the idea of comparing himself with her. Her revealed strength made Pickin understand the gap between them. East Kai stared blankly. In heaven, under the huge crystal ball, the dense crowd became completely mute, the atmosphere falling into a dead silence. After a long time, Grand Kai reacted and inwardly thought, this super scion form is simply too powerful. Bojack, if it hadn't been for the pressure you put on me, I would not have reached super scion 2 so soon. I'm very grateful to you, so to show my thanks, let me personally send you to hell. Miling indifferently smiled her face full of confidence. Miling's voice had just fallen when, with a muffled sound of air breaking, she turned into a beam of light and appeared in front of Bojack. She lowered her body, retracted her elbow, and pushed it horizontally. She did all this in one go. A vigorous punch shot out, sending the panic-stricken Bojack flying. PFFF. Blood spurted out, and the bones of Bojack's chest were broken into several pieces, causing him to twitch, his expression was one of pain. It's not possible. How can she suddenly become so powerful? Bojack screamed maniacally, his excited state close to madness. Miling smiled coldly and once again disappeared. She relentlessly launched successive attacks. Bang! 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 A beam of light flashed in the air, and because the speed was too fast, only the loud and rapid sounds of fighting were heard, accompanied by the distortion of space here and there. Whistling fierce winds whirled around and whenever a conical distortion appeared in the sky, it was followed by the explosive sounds of sonic booms and a gust of fierce winds. Miling was extremely fast, and once she attacked, it would often be accompanied by a heaven-destroying and earth-exterminating energy. Pickin was stunned as he exclaimed, Bojack is totally not able to fight back. Then he smiled bitterly. If he had known earlier that there was such an expert in the world of the living, then he and his team wouldn't have to come over at all. Now, he could only stand on the side and stare at them, which only added to his embarrassment. The battle is over. Zayaya chuckled, and although he couldn't take part in the battle, 
he was extremely happy because Myling was able to break through, which was more enjoyable than him happily fighting personally. Sure enough, Myling glanced at Bojack with a murderous look, and suddenly stopped in the air. Then, her original boiling aura rose, and her fluttering blonde hair, which was surrounded by silvery electric snakes, shockingly formed white key flames outside. The corners of Myling's mouth slightly curled, revealing a sneer. She bent her thumb like a hook, pulled back her hand to gather strength, clenched her fists and cutely shouted at Bojack. A white fist fell from the sky. It was as if a key wall had smashed down, violently knocking Bojack down. The ground trembled and a huge hole appeared. In the hole, Bojack's life was hanging by a thread. The sweat on his body had mixed together with blood, but he was still breathing heavily. After thinking about his impending doom, Bojack leaped into the sky with anger and unwillingness. Bojack is finished. This was the common thought of many people. The victor was decided. Myling's eyes were cold, as silver electric arcs flashed in front of her. There was pride and also arrogance written on her exquisite face. Chapter 327, Unparalleled Super Scion 2 was a completely new level that could be regarded as a continuation of the Super Scion realm. It was a kind of leap to a higher level, condensing, and pushing the power of a Super Scion to even greater heights. But the disadvantages of this boost in power were also evident. After the full power Super Scion level had been perfectly controlled, the burden of Super Scion 2 transformation would once again push down on the physical body. Moreover, the energy that overflows wouldn't be so easy to control, and the concept of full power will no more exist in the Super Scion 2 stage. And at the same time, a Scion's arrogant and cruel side would once again stand out. In midair, Bojack was like a madman, his eyes were about to split open, and his face became extremely distorted as he cursed, damned Super Scion. Why are they always destroying my plans? After venting his anger, Bojack was like a spent force. Thump! He waved out an attack in the sky, and without even sparing a glance at his subordinates, he flew away towards outer space. Escape! This was the only thought in Bojack's mind because only by getting away from the Myling's attack range as soon as possible would he have the slightest hope of survival. As for his companions, he didn't have time to care about them. When faced with disaster, everyone flees in different directions for safety. Myling narrowed her eyes and stared at Bojack, who was gradually flying away from the planet, but she did not immediately give chase, rather, she swept her ice-cold gaze towards the other galaxy soldiers. A cold and suffocating pressure suddenly descended on bodies of Bujin and the others. It was as if they had fallen into an ice cave. They suddenly felt that their whole body had turned stiff as Myling's aura locked onto them, making their bodies unable to move even a single step. Gulp. Bujin gulped, his face turning deathly pale. Pickin asked doubtfully, Bojack has already fled into outer space, but why isn't she chasing after him? After saying that, Pickin couldn't help but fly towards outer space. Zayaya stopped him and said, no need to worry. Bojack can't escape under instant transmission, and also, these three galaxy soldiers need to be eliminated first. Pickin was skeptical, but he again thought about it. Since even Zayaya had said so, then Bojack would certainly not be able to escape. Such being the case, it was better to enjoy the battle in front of him. Pickin was also a person who was obsessed with martial arts, so he wasn't willing to miss such a wonderful battle. After a while, he calmed down and watched Myling's next move. As the saying goes, a dog would even jump over a wall when it gets anxious, not to mention Bujin and the others who were currently facing Myling's oppressive aura, although they clearly knew that their odds of success were minuscule, they had no choice but to struggle hard. Don't be afraid guys, now, we can only stake everything and fight. Bujin gritted his teeth and roared at his companions. At the critical moment of life and death, they used all their energy and produced three beams of light which dispersed out and gathered together within a very short period of time. They had no intention of attacking Myling, rather, they wanted to escape, so they tried to cover up with feints. He he he. Myling giggled as she watched their futile struggle, and then, her eyes flickered with a cold light. She stepped on the ground, and her body rapidly flew with the help of the vigorous force. Whoosh! Golden light rays flashed past, continuously changing direction in the sky. Myling was very fast as she caught up with Bujin and the others in a millisecond. After that, under their aghast and stunned eyes, she punched three times, and drops of blood spattered out. Their bodies bent to the side and fell directly to the ground like three warheads hitting the ground, raising grey dust after their descent. The rugged ground instantly cracked as if being cut by a sword, 
causing cracks to intersect. Three hemispherical impact craters appeared, and in the center of the three craters, the blue-skinned galaxy soldiers were half buried under the ground, wretchedly crawling. Eherha! Eherha! Bujin coughed as he felt as if his chest was about to explode, however, his coughs caused a few mouthfuls of blood to spurt out. Myling's heavy blows had a powerful destructiveness which they couldn't endure. A glimmer of light flashed. Suddenly, an energy ball emitting a sparkling blue light appeared. The energy ball quivered like a heart. Its color getting deeper and deeper with each beat, but its size, however, was getting smaller and smaller, finally, it became a dazzling bright white dot. What is she doing? Pickin was full of doubt. He saw Myling wave her hand, and the bright white energy dot shot out. It was like a raindrop, only the size of a soybean. This soybean-sized energy ball didn't look anything special from just its outward appearance. The bright white energy ball gathered enormous amounts of energy as it approached the ground. The majestic energy pressed down on the surface layer of the atmosphere, and then, it separated towards two sides. Under the powerful pressure, the ground began to collapse. A stifling atmosphere descended. With the sound of explosions, the balance of the energy raindrops which were compressed to the max was destroyed, and the raindrops suddenly expanded and turned into a sparse and uneven mist which spread out to a widespread area. With successive rumbling sounds, the raindrops finally collapsed and disappeared with the most simple and rough explosion. Thick smoke rose, and the planets trembled. Amidst the scorching and chaotic streams of air, Bujin and the others roared with unwillingness, but under the frightening and unstoppable energy, they turned to ash. Myling's control of the energy ball was very good, and there was no extra energy leakage within the spherical range of 10,000 meters. The bright white energy's temperature was very high, and it was extremely destructive, like a large spoon slicing tofu, it directly dug out a large chunk from the planet's crust. Looking at the bottomless pit with a diameter of tens of thousands of meters, Pickin and Atlee felt their hearts turn cold, while their backs were dripping with cold sweat. The smooth section of the earth seemed to have been meticulously polished. It was extremely smooth and glossy as the large chunk of rock suddenly evaporated. This destructive force left them reeling in fear. Ha ha ha, good, good. After she finished with the precise control, Myling wiped the imaginary sweat on her head and stretched her arms happily. The formidable strength of Super Scion 2 left her deeply intoxicated. Myling, you don't have much time. Can you still go and kill Bojack? Seeing that she was lost in her thoughts, Zayaya couldn't help but shout at Myling loudly. Well, after such a long time, it's time to look for Bojack. Zayaya, I want to properly fight with you next time, now, I am not weaker than you. Myling's golden figure stood high in the sky, with her hands folded across her chest looking extremely arrogant. Zayaya held his forehead as he mused, this girl needs to be taught a lesson again. She is starting to get arrogant with just this little bit of success. Just as Zayaya was going to berate her, Myling leisurely rolled her beautiful eyes and mischievously laughed as she teleported directly to where Bojack was at. In the darkness of the vast starry sky, Bojack was fearlessly spurring his full strength to break away from the restrictions of the galaxy. A blurry light ray rapidly flashed as Bojack rushed past a solid planet, the planet gradually receded away from his field of vision. Just you wait for me, Super Scion, I will come back to take revenge for this humiliation sooner or later. Bojack was like a madman, his blue eyes bloodshot. He had already fallen into the obsession of revenge. Suddenly, as if he saw something terrifying, Bojack's complexion drastically changed, and panic was evident on his savage face. Not far away from Bojack, a golden figure, surrounded by electric arcs, was barring his path. It's that super scion. Bojack's pupil shrunk. His throat squirmed as his body trembled, and for no reason, his entire body exuded coldness. At this point, Bojack knew that he couldn't escape, so he stopped fleeing. He gave a loud cry and his body suddenly expanded. His coiled muscles were hard and bulging, and his palms condensed frightening dark energy. Then, he attacked using both hands. It seemed as if he was burning his life, not caring about the cost of extracting the dark energy from within his body. Death Nether Wave Dark Cannon his left hand extracted the darkness energy from hell and gathered it to form a large dark ball of astonishing energy, while his right hand was not left idle. The dark energy turned into a dark dragon which was making threatening gestures. He threw them out together in Myling's direction using both hands. Whoosh! The dark energy floated into the nothingness of the starry sky like a drop of ink flowing into a clear lake, slowly diluting, roaming, 
and permeating. The two heaven-destroying and earth-annihilating energies whistled out in an unstoppable manner like the falling stars among the vast sky full of stars, shining brightly and charmingly like colorful poppies. The gorgeous scenery was beyond comparison, but under the beautiful scenery, was a hidden and despairing lament. Chapter 328, It's Over Myling sneered before opening her palms as a glittering and translucent flash appeared. Gorgeous and sorrowful azure flashes instantly covered the starry sky. The naked eyes could not distinguish the specific number of crescent-shaped blades forming a big ball with a terrifying and chilling aura emanating from it. Whole Sky Star Map Myth Compared to the Star Map Canon, it was even more swift, violent, and powerful. This move, after Myling broke through to Super Scion 2, was almost an improvement of the Whole Sky Star Map Canon. Amidst many mysteries, the power of Star's Rampage increased. It belonged to the same wide area attack method but had an even more destructive power. In an instant, the Dark Divine Dragon attacked, however, it disappeared silently shortly after. The star map myths powerfully unfolded, and under Bojack's incredulous astonishment, it hit him. Bojack unwillingly spread out his defense, but it was a futile attempt. Like sea waves hitting a sand castle on the beach, the water flowed, and all the sturdy defenses got smashed apart. The boiling energy burnt Bojack's body and pushed him directly into the depth of a star, causing the star to explode. The Red Dwarf Star belched from satiation, and Bojack was swallowed up in an instant. Looking at the star in the distant galaxy that had calmed down, Myling coldly snorted. She took out a senzu bean and a tree of mites fruit from the Hoi Poi capsule and ate it, and then she reverted from the Super Scion 2 form and returned to the fourth planet of the galaxy. Killed Bojack. Zayaya came forward with a smile on his face and asked. Myling lifted her chin and said smugly, of course. I pushed him directly into a star with my strongest attack, so he must definitely be dead. But you are really unreliable, you didn't completely finish off the enemy, which lead to Metacooler's appearance. Zayaya muttered to himself and didn't take it seriously. He turned towards Pickin and said, since Bojack and his companions have been eliminated, we will leave first. Just to be sure, you should check if someone amongst them had escaped. UMM, leave the wrap-up work to us, Pickin nodded and promised and then he said earnestly, thank you for your help. Pickin was very ashamed. Originally, the great Grand Kai had sent them down to kill Bojack and his companions, but in the end, they did not help at all in the fight, moreover, several of his companions who had come together with him were also sacrificed. You don't have to check it. I can't feel Bojack's aura anymore, so he must have died, East Kai's voice rang in their ears. Zayaya glanced at Myling and didn't show any reaction towards East Kai's words. He immediately used instant transmission and went back. East Kai coldly snorted. She was very upset with Zayaya's attitude towards her. However, East Kai knew that she couldn't deal with him, so she said to Pickin and Atli, I'll have to trouble you again to go to a few planets in East Area where there are still thousands of big get stars Metasibomin remaining and destroy all them. Yes, East Kai. It's our duty. Pickin and Atli promised and then they looked at the vast land which seemed to have been bombarded flat by artillery shells. They were silent for a moment, and after a while, the professional responsible for teleportation sent by East Kai arrived, with the professional's help, Pickin and Atli rushed to other planets in East Area. On the other side, Zayaya and Myling successfully returned to planet Hongshan. Myling was very excited as she had broken through to Super Scions 2. She held Zayaya's arm throughout the journey, chattering continuously. Her whole body was glued to him, but she didn't notice at all. Hey, Zayaya, when are you going to fight with me? This time, I will definitely win against you, Myling excitedly said. She had been waiting to win against Zayaya for a long time. Her strength had now finally drawn level with Zayaya. If she didn't beat him now, she will have no hope when he also achieves his breakthrough. However, it was hard to pinpoint when Zayaya would break through. Maybe within a few days. Zayaya would also break through to Super Scion 2 and by then, she will no longer be his match. Thus, it was better to fight him as soon as possible. Zayaya let Myling hold his arm as he listened to her request for a good fight and helplessly gave her a white eye. We can talk about the matter of fighting later. I see that your fusion time is ending soon, so let's go home first. After that, Zayaya dragged her little white hand. Myling giggled. They hadn't walked a short distance when her body shone brightly and she again changed back to Xiling and Myers. Both women seemed to be very happy as soon as they appeared. 
They walked on both sides of Ziaya who glanced at them and consciously put his hands on their shoulders, half hugging them. Xiling, what do you feel when you fuse together? What's Myling's existence like? Ziaya asked suddenly. Myling said, I don't know. It seems to me that I have a lot of memories after fusion, but from my point of view, I know that I am Myling. Me too, me too. I also have a lot of Xiling's emotions, and everything else is the same, Myers jumped and said. You both think that you are Myling, but why do I feel that Myling is like a third personality which is hidden beneath the surface? Xiaoya didn't understand the Metamoran's fusion technique. The existence of Myling greatly absorbed Xiling and Myers' potential. After Myling broke through to Super Scion 2, the Super Scion state of Xiling and Myers could basically only stay in the normal state. It would be difficult to have another breakthrough. What does it matter? We are Myling. Is Myling's strength not our strength? Though, Myling's time is only 30 minutes. Still, 30 minutes is enough for an ordinary battle. Moreover, aren't you also here, Ziaya? You will definitely protect us, isn't that right? Xiling said happily, her bright eyes trustingly looked at Ziaya as she spoke. Ziaya earnestly promised, Yes, I will protect you. In the next few hours, thousands of Metasibaman on the other three places far in the east area were all destroyed in the hands of Pickin and others. Dealing with Bojack was beyond Pickin's power, but with the trifling Metasibaman, he could do it single-handedly as it was a very easy task for him. Pickin, thank you very much for your help. Now, you can go back to heaven, also, I will have Great Grand Kai reward you, East Kai was delighted as she said in a bright voice. Feeling ashamed, Pickin said, I do not deserve your praise. These credits should actually be given to the two super scions. Humph, just speaking of those two people makes me angry. Forget it, I can't control them. East Kai coldly snorted. She was very angry in her heart because such arrogant and unyielding people had appeared in the territory under her jurisdiction. Fortunately, Planet Onction's scions are not as evil as when they were in North Area, so the one who should really be having a headache must be North Kai. I have heard that up until now, North Area has been subjected to oppression by the former Frisia forces. East Kai mused. There was no disparity without comparison, but how can happiness be compared? Compared with North Kai's side, East Kai's heart was much more at ease. Now East Area could be considered to be a peaceful paradise. East Kai, we are now going back to heaven. Pickin softly said, and the golden halo above his head suddenly burst into a gorgeous radiance. The laws of the world of the dead and the world of living operated, and Pickin and Atli returned to Grand Kai's planet. Looking at the place where Pickin had disappeared, East Kai resolutely muttered to herself, the next step is to rebuild the Galactic Patrol Organization. Ha! This will be another big project, East Kai sighed as she muttered. However, no matter how big the project is, it is still necessary to do it, East Kai thought for a bit and started contacting the other Kais. However, East Kai didn't know that just when she let her guard down for a moment, nearby the red dwarf star that the fighting had occurred, a head which had orange hair traveled through the vast starry sky like a comet and collided with an uneven greenish-white planet. Chapter 329, Dull Days the calm days were like tea in a glass, carefree and fully poetic. At the periphery of Planet Onction City, a white mist merged, and as if it were from a fantasy, the mist transformed into various shapes from time to time. Ziaya was floating above a misty peak, and the thin, moist water vapor soaked his hair. However, in the turbulent key waves, his golden hair was still carefreely fluttering in the wind. Ziaya had been in this state for a long time. In a place not far away from him, a girl, who was similarly surrounded with golden light but with silvery white electric arcs around her body, was looking at him with a cocked head. Her shiny white battle armor swayed with the wind, and because it was made of special materials, it was like a layer of gauze on her body, which was more convenient so as to exert her full strength in battle. Ha! Huh. Ziaya opened his eyes to reveal a green color and softly sighed in relief. How are you feeling? The girl arrived before him and asked. Ziaya smiled calmly and said, Almost. I'm just short of the final barrier. According to his own feeling and reference to Myling's Super Scion 2 form, Ziaya knew that he was getting closer and closer to the breakthrough, and now, he was only lacking a little opportunity. Maybe in one or ten days, the last layer of the membrane would be opened, revealing a new scenery outside the window. Myling smiled, her beautiful face blooming like a flower as she said, I can only fight you to a draw after transforming into Super Scion 2. If you also break through, 
I wouldn't be able to beat you anymore. Mailing seemed to be very unwilling, but her face was full of smiles from beginning to end. If Zaya break through, she would still be very happy. How can someone break through just by saying so? Who knows how long it will take to cross that one step? Zaya rolled his eyes and said as he glanced at Miling. Opportunity, this thing was a very hard concept to explain. Sometimes, a word, a gaze, seeing a landscape, or even an act like drinking a glass of water may cause a breakthrough, it was an elusive and very difficult concept to fathom. Of course, such cases were very few. To science, the breakthrough opportunity was often contained in a battle, and the breakthrough in the midst of a battle was the most consistent with the characteristics of science. Oh, by the way, will the Planet Onction's martial arts tournament be held in a few months? Zaya suddenly changed the subject and asked. UMM, Dad and the others are already preparing. Mailing answered and then said spiritedly, I heard from Dad that this martial arts tournament will be held a little more grandly, and most of the scions on planet Hongshan will participate. This martial arts tournament was decided by Zaya ten years ago. At that time, he had just returned from Universe 6 and brought back 28 portions of Fountain of Youth from Universe 6. Besides Adri and the others who used 12 portions, 16 remained. Back then, Zaya decided to award six portions of them to the top three winners of the Planet Hongshan Martial Arts Tournament which was planned to be held 10 to 20 years later. Of course, the matter about the Fountain of Youth was not publicly stated. However, Zaya still underestimated the Scion's thirst for reputation. Even if there was no reward, those Scions coveted the rankings of the Martial Arts Tournament. In just a few days, the number of Scions who signed up for the competition had already broken past 10,000. Almost all adult scions had signed up, which made the staff very busy. As a rare event of Planet Hongshan for the past many years, the martial arts tournament was not only busy for the organizers, but even the Fadea people living on Planet Mission were very busy because they were responsible for the construction of the martial arts arena. At this time, a large martial arts arena was being built, and the small and large arenas added together were 64. Because there were too many scions competing, the number of rewards was naturally not only limited to the top three. As long as they entered the top 100, they would win generous rewards. Senzu beans, the tree of might's fruits, universe spaceships, everything was available and placed on a platform for prize awarding. For the tournament, Planet Onction's logistics department had also purchased very crazily. Hee <laughs> hee, so many people are going to participate in the competition, so the working group of the tournament would be very busy, Myling said with a broad smile. Her silver bell-like laughter matched her attractive face, looking gorgeous. This is understandable. After all, it's only held once in ten years, and if they miss this chance, they will have to wait another ten years for the tournament. Zaya laughed, understanding clearly. From the roots, a scion's desire for battle was far more than that of earthlings. Just like the World Martial Arts Tournament on Earth, there were no more than one or two hundred participants in the tournament held every three years. Although they increased, they still did not exceed 300 people. Compared with Planet Onction's martial arts tournament, it seemed to be insignificant. The term world was also not especially added to Planet Onction's martial arts tournament. If it was named Planet Onction's World Martial Arts Tournament, the entire Planet Hongshan would be overturned. Not to mention the scions who haven't signed up yet, I'm afraid that even the experts in the universe would fight for the title of number one in the world, Zaya sighed as he said. With Planet Onction's current influence, if a martial arts tournament was held, it would naturally attract a lot of contestants in the universe and spectators who were fond of such tournaments. If they ran it properly, it could also be a way to get rich. However, Zaya also knew that the experts in the universe were like clouds, and if they do this, it will inevitably lead to too much fame. A tall tree attracts the wind. Although Planet Hongshan had confidence in this aspect, Zaya also knew that the larger the fame was, the more it would be worrisome. So it was better to make a big fortune behind the doors. After that, Zaya and Myling didn't continue to talk, and instead, they streaked through the void. Two blurry figures traversed through the sky and returned to their home. Zaya, quickly wash your hands and come eat. Rebecca's voice came from the kitchen. Because lunch was still on earth while Zaya and Xiling were busy training, they had been eating food these past few days at Adri's home. Okay. Zaya slightly nodded and then he turned on the faucet and washed his hands. At this moment, Myling split into Xiling and Myers. The two women entered the kitchen while grinning and helped Rebecca carry the meals out. In the dining hall, 
a short-haired teenager was already sitting at the dining table. He was Xiling's younger brother, Larit. He was already eleven years old. He had recently been carrying out a mission with several of his companions, so he hadn't returned home for a long time till now. Xiaoya also hadn't seen Larit for a while. As his brother-in-law, he stepped forward, greeted him and asked him with concern, How has your training been going on? Larit grinned, patted his chest and confidently said, There is no problem. I can feel that I am becoming stronger every day. Xiaoya nodded. Larit's latent talent was very high. Plus, his body was currently at the stage of growth, and the cells in his body were the most active. It was the prime time when his strength could break through, so Xiaoya didn't think that Larit's so-called becoming strong every day was him boasting. Sensing Larit's aura, Xiaoya confirmed this point even more. Xiling's younger brother's battle power had already reached 2100. It seemed that Larit treated training very seriously. After all, for science, strength represented everything, and no scion would be careless in enhancing their strength. Talents like Larit who could reach 2100 battle power at the age of 11, although not many on planet Hongshan, they were also not few. Their strength would quickly double after entering adolescence. Reaching 5 or 6,000 battle power was the norm in these few years. This was a lot faster than planet Vegeta's times. Soon the piping hot meal was served. Looking at the delicious and fragrant dishes, Xiaoya felt his stomach rumble with hunger. He picked up a small plate and started gulping down food. Planet Onction's dishes had absorbed the essence of Earth's food, and the culinary arts had improved a lot. The clattering sound of bowls and chopsticks soon stopped and Xiaoya leisurely lay down on the sofa after eating to take a nap. At this time, the door opened, and a black-haired girl came in. After seeing Xiaoya, her eyes lit up as she asked, Brother Xiaoya, where is Larit? Oh, it's you, Elise. You are looking for Larit? He is training in the training room. Xiaoya glanced at the girl in front of him. She had a long hair hanging down to her waist and had finely chiseled features. This girl was the youngest daughter of Bardock and Jin. She was two years younger than Gaku. Elise nodded towards Xiaoya with her big eyes shining and then walked straight to the training room of Adri's home. Xiaoya gave her a profound look and then went to sleep. Elise had formed a squad with Larit to carry out missions, and also, she was the captain of the squad. Chapter 330, A Bigger Stage At the same time, in a corner of the vast expanse of the starry sky, the dark and hazy stardust were densely packed together, forming a circle of impenetrable key wall. Inside the key wall, an uneven emerald white star flashed with white light. The diameter of this emerald white star was less than 100 kilometers. There were tubular passages scattered around on the uneven metal surface. These passages were severed, revealing a circular black hole. Entering along the hole, and at the center, a few kilometer tall central computers were still operating. In a green incubator, Bojack's head was immersed in it. Below the head were tubular nerves like fiber. At this time, these tubular nerves were like a small snake moving around, and they kept squirming, full of vitality. After that, they entangled together and slowly grew longer. Soaked in a green solution, these tubular nerves either extended or coiled into a ball. Soon, bluish muscles gradually formed. At the heart's position, a black nucleus began to expand and contract, absorbing the surrounding energy. After a little while, skin formed, and on the surface of the skin, a sparkling bluish layer of sturdy alloy covered it little by little. Gilu. Gilu, bubbles formed in the green incubator, as Bojack abruptly opened his blue eyes, his face distorted into a malevolent and prideful sneer. This time I was really very lucky. I actually came across the core computer of Big Get Star. What is this substance that is being integrated into my body? I feel that my body is growing in strength, hee <laughs> hee, wait for me Super Scion. When I recover, it will be the time of your doom. When he thought of the Super Scion, Bojack crazily roared. The green incubator suddenly seemed to be boiling as big bubbles constantly formed. On the other side, Xiaoya stayed on planet Hongshan for a while and then returned to Earth. Soon, he got news of the Red Ribbon Army's destruction from Tights. He had previously entrusted Tights and the others to arrange people to find Dr. Jero's whereabouts, but he didn't get any substantial news. Who knew in which corner Dr. G. Arrow had hidden? Xiaoya's people had searched everywhere, but they did not find his traces. Do I really have to wait until the start of the storyline for him to appear? Xiaoya helplessly thought. By that time, the androids would have already appeared, 
and Dr. Jero's role would be much less. Forget it, anyway, the Fedea people's research on the Metacoolers has made some progress, so Dr. Jero's participation will not be necessary. Zayaya thought for a moment and gave up the idea of continuing to search for Dr. Jero. After all, he would only be there for making some improvements, and even without Dr. Jero, the Fedea people were not much inferior. At the same time, Zayaya got a piece of unfortunate news from Tites that Dr. Takuna Shinomori, who lived on an isolated island, had passed away not long ago due to his old age. There is now one less genius on earth. Zayaya sighed with emotion. But then he smiled indifferently and tossed away these emotions to the back of his head. Based on his aura's reaction, Zayaya found Tian Xinyan who was training in the wilderness. Wherever Tian Xinyan was, there will also be Tietsu, they had been training together. Seeing Zayaya appear, Tian Xinyan hurriedly stepped forward and called out, Teacher. Zayaya smiled as he looked at Tian Xinyan and nodded with satisfaction. After not seeing him for more than half a year, Tian Xinyan's strength had improved a lot. Now, his battle power had reached 260, and there were very few on earth that could match him. Tian Xinyan, your current strength is already one of the best among the people of earth, but an easy and comfortable life would only sap away your will. Furthermore, you will not be able to improve your strength much by staying on earth, so I have considered and decided to arrange for you to go to other planets for training, Zayaya directly spoke out his thoughts. Of course, there was also the lookout on earth which could improve Tian Xinyan's strength, but Zayaya's knowledge of martial arts was much richer than the kami, furthermore, he had already taught Tian Xinyan what the kami would teach him. Next, Tian Xinyan needed to thoroughly master them himself and use it for himself, which required certain environmental factors. Why did Gaku and Piccolo's strength not increase much in the five years before the Scions invaded but then crazily increased in the later stages, forming a sharp contrast in their strength before and after? Of course, a part of the reason was because of the original work author's setting, but apart from these factors, simply from the perspective of martial arts, Zayaya believed that the excessively easy and comfortable atmosphere on Earth was also a very important reason for their lack of progress. After all, before the Scions invaded, Gaku and Piccolo were already one of the strongest experts on Earth. Without the threat of foreign enemies, their potential would not really develop. After the Scions and planet Namek Saga, Gaku and Piccolo's battle power began to slowly rise, and it even rose to an extent that made people feel a little conflicted. Now that Tian Xinyan was his disciple, how would he allow Tian Xinyan to continue to stay on Earth? Could it be he would let Tian Xinyan follow his old path in the original work and gradually disappear in the torrents of time? Zayaya would not allow this. Even if this disciple would not be as good as a super scion in the future, Tian Xinyan can't be allowed to fall behind too much. Although the bloodline of earthlings was fundamentally much weaker than scions, it wasn't as if there were no means to become stronger. While on the side, after listening to his teacher's arrangements for him, Tian Xinyan couldn't help but be inwardly shocked. From his teacher's words, he understood many things. Can it be that teacher really wants to bring me out of Earth and go to other places to train? Are there also other civilizations in the universe? Tian Xinyan was stupefied. In the end, he is still a naive Earthling. Zayaya looked at Tian Xinyan's absent-minded appearance and chuckled, and then, he threw an eyeglass-type energy detector. Teacher, what is this? Tian Xinyan took the energy detector that Zayaya had thrown over and looked at it carefully as he asked. He didn't seem to understand the usefulness of the eyeglass. This is an energy detector commonly used in the universe. Very few people among the universe civilizations can sense the existence of Qi. This detector is used to determine people's battle power, Zayaya looked at Tian Xinyan and explained. You can use it to detect the level of one's own battle power. Then Xinyan asked, stupefied. Yes, Zayaya answered. For the first time, Tian Xinyan had heard that there was an equipment that could detect an individual's battle power. Immediately, he felt the novelty. He took the energy detector and fiddled with it. He pushed down a button, and a series of fluctuating numbers immediately appeared on the eyeglass, finally, the value was fixed on 261. 261. Tian Xinyan muttered to himself, but he did not know if the value was high or low in the universe. This number represents your battle power. An average adult earthling's battle power is between 2 and 3 points, with very few exceeding 5, Zayaya said with a smile. Additionally, Blonde Launch's current battle power is 510, much stronger than yours. Tian Xinyan listened carefully and couldn't help but feel a little astonishment. 
I didn't expect ordinary adult earthlings to have only two or three battle power, which is really weak. In contrast, his 261 battle power was quite extraordinary, which made him a little happy. But when he heard that Blonde Launch's battle power had actually reached 510, he felt that he was actually not considered powerful. Zaya's words had broadened his horizon. He fiddled with the energy detector as he mused, the glass monocle is showing a 510 energy source at 2,100 km southeast, this should be Blonde Launch, and there is also a 240 energy source at 10,440 km south of here. It should be Gaku. Tian Xinyan roughly understood the strength that the numerical values on the detector represented, and then, he waited for Ziaya to speak with a serious expression. He knew that his teacher would not tell him about this for no reason. Sure enough, Ziaya continued, in the universe, earthlings are but a very weak race. There are many powerful experts in the universe. It is also very common to have a life form with 2000 battle power, and even some powerful life forms battle power can exceed 10,000. After listening to Ziaya seriously, Tian Xinyan's expression could not help but be overwhelmed with shock. His heart shook and at the same time, he also felt excited. At this moment, he really realized the mystery and vastness of the universe. So, the universe is actually such a big stage. Compared with it, Earth is really too insignificant. Tian Xinyan's fists slightly trembled, as a strong fighting spirit shone in his three eyes.